And that was long as hell. That was really long. (laughs) May have to redo that. A third time. Yeah. Yeah. So I am am extremely sick today. Episode 18. Welcome back, everyone. We are here. I'm going to apologize now. I'm on two doses of Zycam, an emergency and immunity booster. Um, Mucinex, Advil. I'm trying. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so congested. It's not even funny. I noticed that it keeps glitching over there. Yeah, I noticed that too. Do you it, think that's a problem? No, because it's okay. the cameras are recording, not the. That's just for us to be able to see okay. if we're in focus or not. <clears throat> so, uh, we have a lot of housekeeping to do. Uh, we've been very sick for the last two weeks. The whole house has been sick. It's been the last three weeks. And everybody's through it now, except for me. And I got it at the very end. I couldn't have got it while you were sick. So we could have just taken the time down. But yeah. like on the last episode that we uploaded where you did the, um, where you did the, the pickup line <laughs> yeah. and I put the horns in, we got an email from somebody that said, I don't know if your podcast has been hacked, but now it's loaded with ads and the horn honking thing scared the hell out of me while I was driving. <laughs> so <clears throat> I, I want to start there because we are monetizing our podcast. Finally, yeah. found a way to monetize our actual podcast. So for all of you who listen on a streaming service, the ads don't cost you anything other than a couple seconds of annoyance. Just bear with us on that. That's the only way that we can make money on the podcast stream. And if you don't like the ads, just go to YouTube. Right, and pay for the premium service. Um. But we are trying to squeeze blood out of every rock when it comes to finances. We want to monetize all of this so that this could be a full-time gig for us. This being a full-time gig is the only way I can justify doing it going forward. Right. Yeah, with the amount of time that we put into it. Absolutely. And, um, you know, our Patreon group is doing its thing. Discord's doing its thing. We're making money. We've we've now put um, our book list in the description of all of our videos moving forward um, on YouTube. So for those of you who want to do the recommended reading list, we have that. It's getting updated and it's monetized. We got an Amazon affiliate. Um, I've reached out to a couple companies trying to get sponsorships so that we can get like um, coupon codes that, that's going to actually benefit us. <clears throat> and um, it's just a process. Mm-hmm. So knowing that you guys have to get the audio and you guys are going to get ads on Spotify and Apple and all of that, I apologize, but nobody works for free. I'm sure you don't. So we're trying to make money. So now that I'm feeling better and I'm my thoughts are more cohesive and I'm not dying... I really want to put more effort into getting the women's group completed. And I want to, I want to start doing a murder mystery podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Or like a little side, whatever <clears throat> underneath the to be better umbrella. If we're going to do that, we're going to have to set that other room up. It okay. just makes sense because it's, you're going to have a lot more access to a computer. You don't have to do everything on an iPad. Like it yeah. makes sense to do that. Um, we, we've, we've, so things are evolving for us quite rapidly. I just did 800,000 on, on TikTok. You're almost a five. Mm-hmm. Um, we we're over 40,000 now on YouTube. We're almost to 41. Um, our streaming platforms are holding in terms of like where we rank yeah. on the charts has been holding the same positions for weeks now. And we figured out that we have about a hundred thousand <coughs> subscribers yep. spread across the streaming services. Yeah. It's wild that this is the way that this is all playing out. Yeah. Um, we have, uh, t-shirts still. For those of you who would like to buy shirts at to be better.co, I don't know how long those are going to last, but they are up. Um, uh, yeah, we're actually getting pretty low on the blah, blah, blah communication shirts. We are yeah. the um, check in shirts. We still have a, an abundance of, but I put in an order for a thousand shirts for just the blank shirts with the guy that we buy our t shirts from. That way we can make them as needed. <clears throat> that way we can, yeah. So that when I'm ready to do the next run of shirts, he has the shirts there and it'll be a little bit cheaper on us and we can make a little bit more of a profit, like a dollar a shirt. But You know, that makes a lot of sense. I was like, where are we going to put a thousand t-shirts at in the house? It makes sense that it would just stay Stay at the warehouse and print as, okay. Yeah. I, um, I I really want to get to a point where I can open a t-shirt business, not, not like a clothing line, but like a printing business where we can make t-shirts for local businesses because then we can do, um, our shirts through our own company can bill it we make the money off of it versus somebody else uh the cost of everything goes down because we're getting the shirts at cost versus a markup like there's a whole lot that i I, you know but that's all everything in time i guess everything in time yep we i I, i've been we had uh another therapist reach out to us that's three now yeah and one of them recommended a book to us and i got the book and i started listening to it and and there there were some things that were said that like created my normal train train of yeah 
an avalanche of nonsense that just cascades out of control. I mean. You mean? Is that a bad thing? No. It's just the way that my brain works. Yeah. Um, Let's say we have a podcast because of the way we think. So. Yeah, it's true. Um, so we've been told our entire lives that nobody can make you angry. That it's right. choice. When you get angry, you're making a decision to be angry right. or to be sad. Um, that process in that book that I'm reading came from people being depressed because the, the thought and choice theory is that that's actually a decision that you make to be depressed. <clears throat> and whether you agree with that or not, my thought process went from um, if you make a, if, if being angry is a decision, you're making a choice to be angry from the um, external information that's being delivered to you. And then you choose to be angry from that. Mm -hmm. Then no one else can make you happy. It's not possible for another person in life to make you happy. The only thing that they can do is provide you outside information that indicates you should be happy. <clears throat> and then you make a choice to do so. That led to the next thought of pro uh, process of thought where um, misery loves company. Right. So you get a bunch of people who are miserable and depressed around each other and they're all miserable and depressed. Because they feed off of each other. <clears throat> right. And very rarely do you find a happy, bubbly person inside of a group of a bunch of depressed people because it's depressing to be around a bunch of depressing people. I'm good. So when you find people who are genuinely happy, they find other people who are genuinely happy and then they, they feed off of that external information. Mm -hmm. If you have a, somebody who's motivated and positive and you got this, you're going to have that feel. Um, so my pro thought process went all the way through all of that. And then it landed on the control versus boundaries thing <clears throat> because you can't physically be controlling. I'm sorry. You can't actually be controlling. You can only try to influence other people's decisions on whether or not, I mean, obviously you can hold somebody down. Like you can physically be controlling. Right. But the idea of me saying, I don't want a woman who goes to the bar and everybody on the internet saying that's controlling. It's not controlling. It's me setting my standards and then you making a decision whether or not that's okay or not. Mm -hmm. There's no control there whatsoever. The control is my life. Right. The external circumstances for you, the external information is knowing that I am not okay with that. Then you have to make a decision on whether or not you're going to be okay with not doing those things or you're going to do them anyways. And then I have to respond to the external information that you are putting out as well. So when you when you break all that shit down and you really look at it, like it, it really takes in that extreme accountability that we talk about so heavily in um, <clears throat> the you, you get you get so much extra. Uh, I don't know where I was going with that because of the phone went off and I just lost my entire train of thought. That sucks because that was a really good train of thought. Yep. It's gone now. Do not disturb. Yep. Do, do, do. Do, 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 do. <laughs> The Titanic music. The what? The Titanic music. Oh, because I put it on Do Not Disturb? No, because your <clears throat> thought is gone. Like Leonardo DiCaprio's character. Yeah. Yeah. Saw a TikTok last night that says when a couple has a height difference, and it said Rose's height was like 5'9", and <laughs> it showed Jack, and his was 12,600 because he sank to the bottom of the ocean. She was uh, one of the most hated villains in a movie ever for me. Yeah. She was. She used that dude's boat and all of his money on the Titanic like exploration, knowing that he was looking for that diamond, told her shitty ass story, made everyone listen to it, and then threw the fucking diamond in the water. Yeah. She's a villain, bro. Yeah. You didn't even say thank you, nothing. Just fuck you guys. Yeah. Villain. <laughs> Don't you think that was her processing everything that happened this massive? She should have processed her ass event. right off the boat, is what she should have done. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, she died in her sleep that night after. You're so spicy. I don't like people. I don't like people either. I am. Um, Just a <clears throat> constant headache. It is. So let, let's, with, with that actual phrase, I, I don't like people. We're in a, a podcasting scenario where we're actually trying to make people better. Yeah. And we've been getting so many emails and like people following us, wanting us to help them out. And I'm getting to the point where the emails that are coming through, I don't want to read anymore. Yeah, <clears throat> because yeah. they're all like, I've been in a relationship for three months. I can't help you. Like if you're having problem three months into your relationship, call, cut ties, move on. We received one this morning <clears throat> where they said, I met this person a few months ago. And in my mind, a few months means three. Right. And then she was like, we were, we've been dating for one month. You have nothing invested here. If right. there's already issues, cut your losses. And now, you know, going forward what you're not going to tolerate. 
There's there's not a <coughs> redeemable situation in my mind. When you know somebody that new, you, there's no loyalty there. Right. So why would they feel any sort of obligation to change who they are to appease you? Right. Well, they shouldn't have to change who they are. Right. You should find people that mesh with the things that you want, and that's who you should try courting. Right. But like those those emails that we're getting, we 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 are cherry picking emails now, mm. and we went through and we're like not reading, not reading, not reading, not reading because it's I've been in a relationship for three months, or he's highly abusive, or. Yeah. You know, he's an alcoholic and like we can't help those situations. You can't make people not be who they are. Right. You can take people who are decent people and make them better if they want to change. But if they don't want to change, they're not going to change. Mm -mm. And if you've been with somebody for less than a year and you're having a ton of issues like leave, leave. You're not obligated at that point. And I don't care how much you claim to love them. If it's not going well in the first two years, it's going to be way worse after that because the obsession phase is gone. Mm -hmm. Yep, you guys are having sex now too. When that stops, it's going to get even worse. Yep, and it's going to. It will eventually. It will stop, 100%. I'm also starting to get frustrated with emails where women email in and they're trying to take the blame for how their husband's treating them. What do you mean? Like, we received an email this morning where a woman's husband is miserable at his job. He's good at what he does, but he gets paid less than what he's worth. He, they, I, it's sketchy shit all around he's miserable he's constantly complaining and she just finished an apprenticeship as a tattoo artist she's been doing it for two years now and he is almost making her feel guilty for being how happy she is in her career field and he's pushing her to say come on get me an apprenticeship at your shop like ask your boss ask your boss her boss is like i'm not doing that yeah no that's that's a big red flag so now he's blaming her for that and just everything is miserable because this man doesn't want to quit his job and find a new one and she said i just don't know what to do to fix this situation like what how do i fix this i'm like this is not a you problem right this is a him problem and the whole mask of love and everything you're really gonna let somebody treat you that way just because you're in love it just it blows my mind the idea that you're gonna be with somebody and they're gonna shit on your happiness because they're not happy in life is a problem it like is. what does that say about your character you know they say that character is is defined by what you would do if no one ever knew you were going to do it. Like right. that's that's how you can define what your character looks like because no one would ever know your actions and what you would do in those moments to find who you are. <clears throat> you mean in moments where nobody knows what you're doing. Right. That's how you define yeah. your character. What you said before that didn't make sense to me. Why? Just the way you phrased it. Like you said think of what you're going to do before you do it or whatever. That doesn't make sense because actions mean nothing if they're not actually done. I don't, I don't remember what I said, but apparently it was way off because... Yeah, the way you phrased it made it sound like, hypothetically, right. what would you do if you were alone? That's that's how you define your character. Right, but I believe it's the actions that you do when you're alone, like defending somebody's name when they're not present. That defines who you are, you know? We're saying the exact same thing. Right, but you're making it sound like the things that you think about defines who you are. It does. Your thoughts become things. Okay. So if you, if you, if you are one of those people who saw uh, an old lady getting mugged, and did nothing about it, you're a coward. Yeah. And if you see something happening and, and like somebody drops their wallet and nobody sees them drop it, but you and you pick it up and pull all the money out of it, that's your character. That's who you are because nobody knows what you're doing. Right. <clears throat> that's how you define your character. I don't even remember why we got on that topic either. Because this man's being super nasty to his woman who's happy in her career and he's not making her feel guilty about it. So, so those conversations are probably had behind closed doors where no one's going to ever see. And he's confiding in her to try to get a level up for him. And if they're married, like her leveling up is you guys leveling up. And if you were that concerned about your level up and about being a good man and being a better man, you would fucking get the better job. Instead of trying to ride your woman's coattails, you would have taken the steps way before now to have made that um, a better life. Right. It's just, it, it becomes very mentally wearing. All of the emails. Yeah. Well, and, and it doesn't, it's not all of the emails. We get emails that are like legit, like we've tried everything. What do we do now? I don't know if I'm making it to the live stream tonight. Yeah. It's bad. <clears throat> um, we get those emails where people genuinely have real problems. We've been married right. for 20 years. We, we just want to get back out of the roommate phase. You know, these are issues that we're having in communication. Those are the emails that I really want to deal with. Right. I mean, it's still mentally taxing for me, though. Right. But the emails that we get where I've been in a relationship with someone for two months and I found out he's watching porn. So what? 
Right. If you're if if you're not willing to accept that from your your partner, then leave him. It's been two months. Do you think you're going to make him stop doing that? Do you think that you are going to be able to change somebody else's behavior simply because you want to? Because that is what controlling is. That's that you can't make somebody do some shit. That that implies ownership. That you own him. You want to just jump into some emails? Yep. So the first one is my anxieties are getting to be too much. I have a past with being cheated on and lied to multiple times. It's made it extremely hard for me to connect with someone as I think they'll just leave or hurt me. My current girlfriend slash fiance treats me like a king and it's been amazing being with someone who, uh, who's as entranced with me as I am with her. So is she your girlfriend or is she your fiance? Apparently she's both. Because you can't just pick one, <coughs> pick one to call her. Even so, I still constantly overanalyze her words, actions, and relationships with her friends, and I'm terrified of bringing it up and talking about it or setting boundaries and expectations because I don't want to become controlling or insinuate I'm unhappy, that I'm unhappy. So instead, you'd rather be a coward right. and just live in silence and hope to God that the imaginary lines that she doesn't even know exist aren't crossed. Aren't crossed. And then when they are crossed, you're going to get upset and anxious and she's going to feel like you're blaming her for something she yeah. didn't even know was a thing for you. Y- your past is your past. Mm-hmm. If you're walking backwards, eventually you're going to run into something. You're never going to be able to move forward. You get stuck. So all of that past shit that's happened, if you can't get over that, don't fucking date somebody and certainly don't marry them because you're bringing all of your bullshit to somebody who didn't do you dirty. Right. And if you can't get over that, you don't need to marry that woman. And if you're not man enough to set your fucking boundaries and be like, this is not okay, this is not okay, this is not okay, this is kind of okay with stipulations Mm -hmm. and anything beyond that over there, I'm not okay with because you're afraid of being controlling. You're setting yourself up for failure. You can't not have expectations and then hold somebody to those standards. And then even if you don't do any of that, you're going to be miserable for the rest of your life. Right. So... Not only are you making this harder on yourself, you're going to make it harder on her in the long run. If this is going to continue in the cycle in 10 years, she's going to ask herself, why am I even here? I'm willing to bet it doesn't say how long they've been together, huh? It does not, no. If you constantly overanalyze words, actions, and relationships that she has, you shouldn't be in a relationship. Right. If that is a constant thing for you where you're panicking nonstop and you are so insecure in your relationship don't be with somebody right you really have to work on your mental state this is going to sound really shitty but that's a red flag to me that this is uh, again these are the kind of emails that we get all the fucking time now and like i can't help you yeah you 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 have past trauma that you have done absolutely nothing with and now you're engaged to somebody i I don't even know if they're actually engaged because if if i were engaged I would not say girlfriend slash fiance. That is my fiance. Right. Unless I was to clarify that it's a woman, but I don't know. Yeah. Like, did you actually get down on your knee and propose to this woman? Or are you guys just saying you're engaged? Because I, I view this as two different actions. Are you done with this one? Yeah. Yeah, I am. I, I Guys, I, I have no sympathy for your weakness. I, I really don't. And I know that that's a horrible thing to say. But we've all been through horrible shit. And if you're not willing to do the work to become better before bringing your fucking problems to someone else, you are ruining other people. Right. So what happens if this chick is actually infatuated with him or however he worded that Mm -hmm. and he destroys that woman because he is so insecure with his past that has nothing to do with her that when she leaves him, which is probably going to happen, she's going to carry that into the next thing. And the next guy that she meets may be a real fucking gentleman who's going to get destroyed because of this guy's actions. Right. And then because a woman destroyed him, he's going to start treating all other yep. women like shit. Yep. Perpetual cycles of fuckery. It's crazy how it snowballs like that. Yep. One, it really takes one rotten apple to spoil a bunch. Yep. Next email is roommate stage and reassurance. <laughs> that screams, well, I'm insecure too. Yeah, it does. Is that going to be the theme today? Uh, Apparently, this is going to be the insecure episode. I mean, it kind of is because we were just talking about an email we're not even going to read. Right. But her husband's insecure in himself, so he's making her feel like shit because she's happy in her career. Crazy. What do you think of that that new Dr. Pepper? I love it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to have to try one of them. So good. I'm just going to take a little sip. 
little sippy sip. I almost said a little sippy sip and you just completed it for me. You really are the best part of me. <laughs> okay. Hey guys, recently I've stumbled over y'all's page and it has helped me start difficult conversations and has taught me different ways to show love in my relationship. On the other hand, over the past couple of weeks, some new information has come to my knowledge. My girlfriend and I have been together for three years and in the past I have made some mistakes. That's something I've worked through, worked on, and moved past through conversations with my therapist and figuring out why I was giving my attention elsewhere other than my girlfriend. So you cheated and you're saying that you're over it. Question is, is she? <laughs> so that's not enough detail for me. You were giving your attention to other women. It's were cheating. you liking thirst traps? Were you watching corn? Were you having an emotional affair with somebody? Were you having an actual affair with somebody? Right. I, what, what is the extent of it? Because if she's still holding on to things, if it was just you liking thirst traps, you're going to get a different response from me if you were actually messaging a girl for eight months straight and she's thinking that you guys are in a relationship. Right. She has recently, within the past couple of weeks, sat down and talked to me about the mental and emotional struggles she still has. At one point, we discussed her moving past these mistakes over time. And, if she, and that if she didn't think she could do it, we didn't want to stay together and waste each other's time. Smart. She told me she could move past it. But now I know that she has been struggling with these issues while I thought we were good in our relationship. I guess part of my question is why do we hold on to memories or pictures that pop up yearly and put us back into a bad state of mind? Because you fucked up. You can't be mad at her over it. Right. If you did somebody dirty, it doesn't matter if it if they regain the trust in you or not. They're not going to ever forget it. They can forgive you, but those those painful memories are going to come back. You can't just forget that they exist. Right. And you can't be upset with your your person because they can't just forget that it happened. You fucking do the crime, you do the time. So if it takes her 2 years to get over this, if you want to be with her and this is your life your life plan, you have to fucking suck it up and pay your penance. Mhm. If you're not willing to do that, then cut ties and, and cut her loose because she deserves better. <clears throat> right. You did it. What really gets me is that this person said, I thought that we were good in our relationship. Did you feel that way when you were cheating on her? Right. You because know, I, I'm willing to bet she felt that that you guys were good in the relationship, too, mm -hmm. while you were giving your attention to other women. After learning all this information, it took a toll on me more than I thought it would. All the work and effort I put into making myself a better man, boyfriend, and future husband feels like it all went to waste. Right now, I am needing reassurance. Well, hold on. So you're you're playing the victim right now. Yeah, they're, they're playing the victim. No, he's playing the victim. Yeah, he is. You, you don't get to do that. You, you fucked up. She's processing the shit. And if it takes five years for her to process it and you want to be there, you have to suck that up and deal with it. If you can't, and you can't deal with the consequences of your actions, you need to move on. Yeah. It's as simple as that. You don't get to be pity me, poor me, because I thought we moved past this just because you've done the therapy and you're trying to be better. She is part of the equation. You have to accept that she's part of the equation. Your actions made her feel a certain way. And until you've proven yourself enough to her that she's able to get past those things, you have to eat crow. That's just the way there is. That's just all there is to that. So right now I am needing reassurance and have even tried to just flat out say that and that I just wanted that presence around me. So when she came to you and said that she is mentally and emotionally struggling right now, that is her begging you for reassurance in that moment. And you shut that shit down because your feelings were hurt because you thought everything was okay. I want to know if when she needed reassurance, if she was given reassurance. Probably not. He was probably taken aback because he said that he thought everything was good. Right. I can imagine that conversation going, what do you mean? You're still struggling. I thought everything was great. You told me that you would be able to work past this. I asked you, I told you if you couldn't do this, that we should separate. Right. What yeah. kind of conversation is that? That's a very much a, a get over it so that we can move past it kind of mindset. Right. I, I am, I am all about forgiveness mm -hmm. and trying to work through your shit, but it takes time. You don't get to just, you apologize so everything's back to normal. Right, and you don't get to dictate somebody else's grieving period. And again, if you can't handle that, if you can't handle the consequences of your actions, that's a you problem. I bet you the next time you get into a relationship with somebody, you're not going to fucking do what you did because this is what happens. Where's your accountability? Right. <clears throat> you can, you're taking accountability and be like, yeah, I saw a therapist and I'm good now. 
She's you not. still did the damage. Yeah, damage is done. When you put a nail in a fence, you can take out that nail, but the hole is going to stay there forever. Yeah. I'm going to burn this house down. Don't worry, I'm going to put it out. And there'll be a foundation left that's kind of fucked up. But it's okay because I put the fire out. A fire that <coughs> I started. Yeah. Why is it so hard for people to just be decent human beings? Seriously. Like, you know, if you get caught doing what you're doing, it's going to devastate the person you're with. And people have the reasons that they do shit. And if you decide that you're going to try to work through your fucking problems, you have to own the fact that you fucked up. That's all there is to that. So regardless of why you did what you did, and regardless of the therapy and all of that shit, she's hurt. And you did it. There, there's no sympathy from me. Did you stop fooling around behind her back? Probably. Good for you. Well, yeah, but did you do that after you got caught? It was did, probably did after you, he... Did you do something and be like, you know what? This is wrong. I'm going to come clean, tell her I did it, go to therapy, do all the work, become better. <coughs> or did you get caught doing the shit? And part of the agreement was that you go to therapy in order for you guys to work through your problems. And while you're working through your shit, she's trying to work through hers. But because you're the one that's not hurt, she is. You expect her to fucking heal faster? How does that work? Mm-mm. And it's harder to get... It's harder to heal in an environment that made her sick and he fucking made her sick. I I can't imagine. I mean, I can't. I've been cheated on. Coming home every day, knowing that I was getting ready to walk through the door to see the person that betrayed me that I was supposed to trust for the rest of my life. Some people just can't get past that shit. Yeah. And she could have thought back in that moment that she'd be able to get past this. And now we don't even know how long ago he did all of this. It could be a year and a half. Right. And she could be realizing, I just, I don't want this anymore. It's not the same. I see who he is now. He was okay with hurting me like that. What if he does it again? You have anything else you want to add? There are four things in life that you can't get back. A word once it's left your mouth, an opportunity once it's passed, trust and time. Mm-hmm. So you've broken her trust and you wasted her time. And she's continuing to waste her time because if she's not willing to get over this and move past it and like actually knowing that she can, if she stays with him for another two or three years and then falls apart because of something that happened a year into their relationship, like she's, she's prolonging the inevitable. Right. She needs to take accountability on her end as well. Ready for the next one? I am. This one's called how to lead others. We're 30 minutes in (laughs) 30 and on our third email. Well, these are all short emails, so Hey guys, I found you on TikTok and I've started listening to your podcast and it's amazing. Thank you. I wanted to ask Chris for some help or advice on how to lead other men to be better. My sister married a man who is at his core a good man and has the potential to be better. He struggles greatly with corn and sex addiction. He started attending meetings and has a sponsor to help with these struggles. This came after he cheated on my sister not once but three times and the last time being with a sex worker. My sister has asked me to become friends with her husband because she feels I am a true gentleman and having me be an active part in his life, I can help him lead him towards better. He's a 28-year-old man stuck in the mentality of a 14-year-old. He says he loves my sister and wants to be a good man for her, but doesn't have a good father figure or brother relationships. That's bullshit. It's a fucking cop-out. Yeah. That's placing blame elsewhere. Yeah, instead of taking accountability. <clears throat> you don't get to blame other people for your shit. Oh, my dad was a piece of shit. Therefore, I cheat on my woman. Shut the fuck up. Grow up. Like, come on, dude. Oh, I I, see. Uh, And you're sick on top of it. I don't feel well. (laughs) Now you understand why I was so shitty the other day recording. Yeah. I I have no, no tolerance for that. Yeah. Your childhood shit and everything that you've gone through and the lack of role model and all of those excuses that you can give are just that they're fucking excuses. Your actions are yours. The things that you do to other people, you have to own that. You don't get to put the blame on somebody else. That has nothing to do with what's going on. If you haven't worked through your bullshit and all your fucking mommy didn't hug me enough and daddy didn't take me fishing. That's a you problem. You work through that before you start traumatizing other fucking people. As for being a leader of men, you lead by example. I, I don't think that you should get involved in this. no, if if my sister came to me and was like, my husband or my boyfriend is doing blah, blah, blah. I'm like, cool. You want me to fucking beat his ass? Like, no, I want you to mentor him. No, I'm not doing that. Mm-mm. No, because if there's an issue moving forward, 
I'm now a failure because I was unable to correct the problem that he's not willing to take accountability for. Right. You want to lead men, you fucking set an example and surround yourself with people who are willing to reach those expectations that you set because you can't mentor somebody who doesn't want to be mentored. Right. That's a very slippery slope. It is. In fact, his dad has encouraged him to lie to my sister, engage in risky sexual behaviors, and do drugs. He calls my sister a controlling psycho bitch regularly. The dad or the boyfriend? His dad. <clears throat> the boyfriend's dad. I will say my sister is struggling as well with control and is working the stuff out of a mother role with him and be the wife he needs. So they're actually married. Yeah. Could you imagine being married to somebody who's, whose parent talks to you like that and then still going around them? No. No, I couldn't. I could not. Yeah, something else you want to add? I have a whole lot I want to add. I can tell. But I don't know if I want to say this shit because it's it's a lot of it's violent and I don't feel good. So like I don't know if I'm I'm You are it the this illness is definitely escalating the anger. Right. Because if somebody talked to you like that or somebody talked to Amy like that and I got that phone call, I'm going to hurt somebody. Like you're going to get a warning. I'm going to show up at your fucking job or at your house and you're getting a warning and you're not going to talk to my family like that. And if it happens again, the next time we're not going to have words. I'm, I'm okay with that. And you may beat me. You fucking know I was there. Mm -hmm. I, I don't, I don't, there's no sympathy in that. Right. <clears throat> and as, as a, a married man, I would never let my parents talk to you like that ever. And knowing that she's married to this dude and the, the guy's dad is telling him to do drugs and be promiscuous and cheat on his woman. Where the fuck is your boundaries? As a person, why don't you go, this is unacceptable for us. I'm supposed to be your world now. You married me. This is our family and you're choosing the toxic nonsense that has gotten you to where you are in life with the way that <coughs> you're behaving. Excuse me. With the way that you're behaving. And you think this is okay? Do you want me to leave? Like, do you not want to try to make things work? Because this is not make things work behavior. Yeah, I would have left. If you want to be a leader of men, then you lead by example. That's it. There's nothing else that I can tell you in that email because you're not going to make this dude change. Mm -hmm. And the fact that he's not willing to put his wife over his dad is a fucking problem. You can have a conversation with him about where his priorities lie and you can try to um, guide him in that aspect so that he has a voice of reason. But your, your significant other, your, your um, spouse is supposed to come before everything else in your life. He either doesn't know that or doesn't care. Right. Well, I would say from how his dad acts, his parents' marriage wasn't the picturesque. This is how you treat your love of your life and all that shit. Yeah. I wonder how receptive that dude is to any type of outside influence. Because he's obviously somebody who's easy, easily ma manipulated. Right. Coerced. Coerced. Whatever. He is definitely a follower and not a leader. I'm not going to read the rest of it. I wouldn't get involved in any of that. I, I would have, I mean, if, if he wanted to have a conversation with the guy to kind of set things straight, I would do that. But trying to mentor somebody like that, I'm good. Mm -mm. I mean, the, I'm going to, this is going to be the last sentence I read. She has been in an extremely, she has been in an extremely abusive relationship and is still working to heal those wounds. And the tr trust between them has been broken over and over again. There's no coming back from that. So wait a minute. She married somebody without doing the work first. So right. she she took baggage from a previous relationship into a marriage. Yeah. Jerry, Jerry. That's how I feel with these things. Uh, we need somebody to jump in here and be like, DNA results say you are not the father. Oh! <laughs> That's how I, I feel like I'm on a daytime talk show. Yeah, it is very... <clears throat> You know, do people ever take a step back and just really analyze their lives? I do all the time. I mean, I do too. But like in these situations, how has this woman not taken a step back and been like, okay, I am clearly a very traumatized person. I have already been in a super shitty relationship. This man has no respect for me. I do not feel loved by him. He's constantly cheating on me. His father calls me names and he is allowing it. 
Yeah. When do you say enough is enough? Before you get married. Not after. Because she married this guy. She did marry this guy. And this dude is saying, I can see potential in him and I know he's capable of being, capable of being a good man. You're the hopium that you're on and hoping that this guy can be a good guy. That, that's all that is. Yeah. Unless this man actually puts in the work to be a better dude, you're wasting your time and so is your sister. Yep. Episode 18 is rough. Huh? Episode 18 is rough. How did, how did we go from getting emails where we can genuinely help people to shit like that? Because we are now hitting a larger market. We are being shared across multiple platforms and there are millions of people seeing our videos. It is no longer just a select few who really want to hear what we have to say. It's people who see what we have and think that we can give them an instant fix to their relationship. Yeah, but life doesn't work that way. It doesn't. We, we, all the emails that we've read today, none of them are a situation where there's any accountability at all. No one's done any work from pre- previous relationships. No one is, is doing anything to better themselves. That fucking email wasn't even from the person in the relationship. It was from a brother right, who's been about how to mentor. To yeah. <clears throat> if you really want to be a mentor to people, there's a lot of self-help books you can read. Um, there's a lot of things that you can, you can learn. But it doesn't matter how good of a mentor you are. If the person that's trying, that you're trying to help isn't willing to be mentored or isn't willing to learn, you're wasting your fucking time. <clears throat> I have a mentor. I, I have somebody that when I need to make big business decisions, I can call him and he will give me an honest answer every single time, no matter what. And I know for a fact that there are people that have gone to this dude and been like, hey, will you help me? And he's like, nope. And he has shut them the fuck down because not everyone is redeemable. Not everyone has the, the work ethic. Why would I invest my time and energy into your success when I can look at you and look at your past decisions to know that you don't have the fucking testicular fortitude to fucking be a man? I, I don't like that shit. Mm. I like that sentence. Testicular fortitude. Yeah, but like the way that the context you used it in, that was that was hot. <laughs> You're such a manly man. I, I'm really not. I'm not in that like I'm not out fucking bow hunting bears and shit like. I just no, you're not. <clears throat> if it came down to it, though, you would. Yeah, absolutely, but not with a bow. I have I have pew pews. Right. I, I'm not trying to get mauled by a bear. Oh no. Did you break your toy? The, the, the string on the tassel is just unraveling. That, <laughs> that's because you were over here fucking swinging it around like a mace. No, it's because I was pulling on it. Anything else you want to add to that one? Nope. All right, next. I know that we got five emails picked out and we're 47 minutes in. Are you done? No, I want to get through these and then oh. I want to find emails that we can actually affect change because I feel like I'm wasting my time right now. Okay, you just want to start over? No, no, because we fucking recorded for 47 minutes. Right. I, I'm, I don't want my time wasted. <clears throat> and this is going to sound really shitty, and I fucking mean this. You guys sending emails where you haven't done any of the fucking work yet and expect us to just tell you how to fucking do everything... Why would I do that? Why would I invest that much of my life into your situation when you've done absolutely nothing to correct your problem? Why would we invest time into anything in your life when you don't even invest the time yourself? Right. It it just blows my mind. Right. You know, I I don't know. I I really, I, I know, I know that there's good emails in there. I know we have good emails. I see them. We got fucking like 10,000 word essays. Right. There's got to be shit that we can address. These are not those things that we can address. I mean, I just started at the bottom. Yeah. Run it. We'll do the other two and then we'll pause. And I'll go and cough my lungs out and we'll find something that's worthy of our time. All right. This one is called check-in question. How arrogant does that make me sound? I, I, I feel like that was very egotistical to Why? be like it's worthy of our time. That's, that's an egotistical thing to say. I take that back. We can find something that we can actually affect change with. Rephrasing. Okay. okay. Burbage matters. That was a good moment for you. <laughs> All right. This is checking cues with a capital Q. I'm a new listener and have never put my story out there. Having the victim mentality of woe is me. Well, no longer. I am no longer a victim but over the last three years have started to overcome my abuse and mental state of victimhood to that of courage and strength. Okay. I'm feeling this email. 
Okay. I'm 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 liking where this is going. I'm picking up what you're putting down. <laughs> it started with getting married. Well, that's not that's not how you're supposed to start that. <laughs> It starts with the end of my last relationship, right. and I did X, Y, and Z to start working on myself. Not I got married and it did work. Right. <coughs> I married my husband in 2019. He is 40, and I am 31. I was still in school. He was in the middle of a divorce, and I didn't think I wanted any part of that or him after learning of his divorce and having two children. But he saw something in me that I didn't see, and he continued to pursue me after his divorce was final. We started to date in 2013. I knew then that I was with someone I didn't deserve, but I wanted to be someone that he did. That's also a victim mentality. Elaborate. I don't deserve you. I'm not good enough. Okay. Pity me, pity me, pity me. That's a victim mentality. And there's a self-esteem issue there and a self-worth worth issue there. Okay. <clears throat> there's a whole lot in that statement that makes me go, you don't value yourself as a person. I can see that. Why? <laughs> I like how this feels on my skin. Okay. I'm sick and it's bringing me joy. <laughs> Look at me like that. What were you saying? Continue. That was it. Oh. You were just not listening because you were... I was. You made very solid points. I've never viewed it that way because there are times that I think that I don't deserve you. But hearing you say that, you view that as a victim mentality. I, I can see how you view it that way. And now I feel weak and I'm disappointed in myself. So now I realize I have something I need to work on. <clears throat> That's it. That's it. Huh. I know I deserve you. Yeah. And, and I've had a really shitty life. I've done a lot of foul things to people. But I'm at a point now where like I've done a lot of fucking work on myself. Yeah. And all that bad shit that I've done in the past is not my now. It's my past. Right. So... Oh, God, you're hitting me with so many self-reflection -ref things over the last two days. I need you to cool it down. <laughs> the podcast has helped me see what more I have to work on as a woman. Stop it. Come on. Wanting more, wanting more of a traditional marriage where the man is the head of the household and is my protector. We have implemented the check-ins to help him and I communicate better. We both work long hours and are apart a lot. But it also brought up some problems. That's what they're for, though. Right. When I ask him the questions, what can I do better as a partner, or what did I do poorly this week, he doesn't usually have an answer. He says, I don't know, you were pretty great, or I can't think of anything. Right, which means he's not dwelling on shit. Right. It's a good thing. It is. Mm -hmm. Either that or he's afraid to talk to you. Yeah. But I, I'm willing to bet it's more along the lines of he can't pinpoint something that he's unhappy with. Right. We're simple in that aspect. Like, it doesn't take much to keep us happy. Like, fucking... Ain't no hundred ways. That list is four things long. Just suck his dick, play with his balls, and then fix him a sandwich and don't talk so much. And gonna be happy. Do you feel like I do pretty good at that? All three of them. Hell yeah. Top tier. <laughs> <laughs> Are you cutting it out, like, definitively? I don't know. Okay, then I'm not going to ask you what I want to ask you. <laughs> I have told him that it makes me feel uncomfortable or that I can't be honest with him. I tell him I won't get mad or feel upset. I want you to be honest with me. Is this something that I should continue to push? Am I being irrational and getting into my own head too much? Should I ask him to write it down. If yeah. something happens that you do that bothers him, tell him to put a note in his phone or to write it down so that the next time you guys have a check-in, he can actually give you for instances because... Speaking from my experience, if it's one of those things that I can get over in an hour or so, it's gone. Right. I'm not holding that memory because it's going to create a negativity bias. And if we're doing something and I go, I have to remember that she said this. And all week long waiting on the check-in, I'm constantly replaying that moment over and over and over in my mind. You and I are going to have conflict. Right. Because I'm not going to let something go. And now I'm dwelling on it. So now I've been dwelling on something for four days. Day five, something happens. I'm already aggravated because I've been dwelling on something and something new comes along. And that something new that would normally be a just let go kind of thing is now a fucking problem. Right. <clears throat> we don't hold grudges the way women do. We don't. Yeah. We move past things a lot faster than you guys. We don't overanalyze. We don't become emotional about shit. If you guys do something that bothers us, normally we're going to just address it. From my experience, I just say what the fuck is going on. Like, if I'm really bothered by something, like, hey, that just really bothered me. 
we have a discussion about it. Move the fuck on. And once that discussion's over, I'm not bringing it up again. Right. There's no reason for it. I, I was validated. I was heard. You know not to do that again or not to word it that way or whatever to like avoid that situation in the future because it is teamwork. Go team. Like, I don't, I don't understand why that's... As a woman who is having a hard time controlling my emotional thinking on things, I am really hardcore working on the way that men think because I will dwell on shit and I will go to bed and I'll wake up and my first thought the next morning will be, Hey, this fucking happened. Yeah. And it's just a nonstop cycle. I mean, I don't let it affect our days. How does it serve you though? It doesn't. That's why I'm working on it. But as a woman who grew up in a household fully of women, yeah, that's the only thought pattern I know. That's what I was taught. So unlearning that is hard. I think I'm doing pretty okay at it. Like I don't bring shit up from the past and I don't two days after you and I have a discussion or whatever. I'm not like, fuck you for that. Right. Yeah. You you don't do that. I think the only thing that you really like the things that I notice in you that you have to work on the most currently is your um, emotional response to things that you can't control. That's so hard. It's not though, because you can't control it. Right. So like getting super freaked out and worked up and anxious over something that is completely out of your control or not relevant in the moment, you are creating a whole lot of adrenaline in your body that has nowhere to go. Right. And it could be why we got sick. It could be. Because it fucks with your immune system. Well, the reason that I think that way when I get all anxious and I panic when things are out of my, out of my control is because all through my life, even when things were out of my control, it was danger for me. If I didn't get my shit figured out. How, but right. But that's then. Right. This is now. But I still have to unlearn that. Right. And you are unlearning it. I watched you yesterday with the enrollment. Right. <coughs> it's not an easy process. It does take work. But you are unlearning those behaviors. There's, I'm, I'm not a stress person. I mean, I'm very stressed. I have tons of stress when it comes to like finances and business and shit like that. But like home life, things are going to be what they are. And I'm going to do everything I can to influence things to get the outcome that I want. But like in the um, scenario with the kids, it's going to be the way that it is. I can only try to influence the best that I can and stressing out about it. It's not going to change the influence. So like, you know, when I said, this is what you need to do, you need to try to figure these things out. You got the shit taken care of yesterday and all that freaking out that you did three days up to that point was completely pointless. And I think that the more you realize that and the more you see those scenarios, the less likely you are to repeat that behavioral pattern in the future because your biggest stress in life is what we have to have for dinner. Yeah. And the more you remember that, like I handle everything else so that you don't have to deal with that kind of shit. When it comes to the kids in school enrollment and things like that, and homeschooling in the future, like that's a different scenario, but the enrollment thing is done. Right. Homeschooling may not even happen now. You know what I mean? Like there's a whole lot of what ifs, but it's so far ahead that there's no reason to even stress about that shit. A mouth breathing. I feel like a fucking. Me too. That's fatty. why I'm like over here, like, like covering my mouth <coughs> and shit. I hate it. I hate being sick. I hate being congested. We have only done the check ins twice, if that makes a difference, and they're two weeks apart. Yeah, it does make a difference. You guys are new. He still has to see that you're serious about this, and if he is holding on to those things, that you're not going to blow up on him. Like he's he if 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 he is actually holding back and not letting go, like I said he was. He's going to eventually dip his toe in the water to see how you respond. And if you respond poorly, he's going to shut that shit down. He's not going to do it anymore. Yeah. <clears throat> I, I really wish that, that women would understand that our brains work very differently than yours do. And when you realize that we don't have the emotional centers that you guys have, the things that, that bother us can be resolved a lot faster. Yeah. And a lot of that comes down to correcting the actions. Like if you did something that I didn't like and you continued to do it after I said something, the problem would persist. But if I was like, hey, when you do that, it really fucking bothers me. And you're like, okay, cool. We won't do that again. And you don't do it anymore. There's no reason to ever bring that shit up again because you're not fucking doing it. Right. I'm trying very hard to help women understand that men's brains are wired differently. Yeah. These men need a break, guys. Like, <laughs> back off a little bit. In changing the way that my thought patterns are to be more logical, I'm recognizing differences between men and women's thought patterns it's fucking crazy i'm getting nauseous from all this talking yeah yeah you is there any more to that email you yes, want to move to the next one okay let's, let's finish that email and then we'll take a break i feel like i'm running a marathon yeah 
That's dedication. We love you guys. Yeah. And we are trying to continue our content. And like we have been slipping, especially on Patreon. And guys, if you're in Patreon, I'm so fucking sorry for the lack of content that we've been putting out over the last two weeks. But we have been fucking going through it. It's been nonstop. And when this is done and we're both up to par, we're going to spend an entire day recording Patreon episodes. We will get back up. And I noticed that we're getting a lot of drop off because we're not dropping content. Right. We are sick. Like this has been a very unhealthy household for the last three weeks. We are still trying to put out content. We're still recording and doing the things, but it's, it's, you guys just have to bear with us. We will make it up to you, I promise. When I ask him, how am I meeting your emotional needs? He tells me that men aren't supposed to express those and put those out there. I tell him I need to know if I do something that affects you so I can fix it and so I can be better. Again, is this something that I should just allow more time? Yes. He tells me he feels safe in expressing when things go wrong and we usually address it right away. So then, yeah, that is everything that I've said just confirmed right there. Okay. Is that why he doesn't bring them up in the check-ins? Yeah, because it's resolved. It's done for him. It's because he already feels like he's already been addressed. Yep. I'm telling you, our brains don't work like y'all's. Yeah. We don't harbor shit like that. Example is that I left one of the barn doors open and not on purpose. You must slam it shut, and sometimes I don't slam the door hard enough to latch but I make it a conscious decision to turn around and double check the door is latched now because he comes in and tells me, Hey, the barn door is open when I got home. Oh, so that was an example of anything besides. Yeah. But you corrected the problem, right? That's it. That's it. That's a healthy relationship. If he, if he was like, I'm fucking tired of telling you the goddamn barn door, blah, 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 blah. And like is blowing the fuck up and like having a meltdown over the barn door. Over and over and over again, like that's a problem. It's a problem. But hey, the barn door was open. Make sure that you shut the barn door. It, you know, it's been addressed. All right. So now that we're back, I want to get into the Patreon thing just because I have my phone on do not disturb so that I don't get notifications to disrupt a podcast. Um, therefore, I can't just plug the podcast or Patreon when they come through like we normally do. So I'm going to plug it before we get back in emails. Um, for those of you who want to support what we are doing, Patreon is the best way to do that. We have a community over there that gets early release content, exclusive content, live streams. We have a Discord channel that's got over 500 people in it that is a very active, very like-minded group of individuals. It's a lot of fun. Um, we're in there often. We are in there often. Uh, when we have downtime, we're in there a lot because it's fun. Yeah, it is fun in there. Um, but for those of you who want to support us, that is the best way to do it. Second best thing that you can do is is subscribe on YouTube or give us super chats. And lastly, the I think probably the most efficient way that you can support us is by sharing our content. Put it on your social media pages, send it to your family members, send it to friends, anybody that you think may gain value from what we are doing, send that shit. Send um, it. And if you're watching and you're not listening on a podcast streaming service, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notification and all of that bullshit that all the YouTubers tell you to do. They tell you to do that for a reason. It drives the algorithm and helps support what we are doing. What are you doing over there? I feel like my, I don't know. Your chesticles? I feel like there's too much going on on the sides and I'm trying to like, it's all, the camera's on you. Don't worry about me. It's okay. We're good. I want to make sure that I look presentable and not. You always look presentable. You're fucking hottie. Thank you. Everybody's like, oh my God, I love her dress. She's so beautiful. I love her tattoos. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, it's mine. Yeah, it's mine. So uh, I, before we move into the emails, because we actually did cherry pick like six emails in between our break, I want to touch on the leader of man thing a little bit from that, that email where the guy wants to know how to be a leader of men. I, I, I've been thinking about it since the email was read. And I think that in order to truly be a leader of men, you have to live a life that others want to aspire to. So you need to live a life of integrity and quality of character, and you should serve and be a servant to others. You should be doing the things that is necessary to make other people look at you and go, I want to be like him when I grow up. Like, that's a very prevalent thing. You can't expect people to lead if you are an ineffective leader. Um, there are books that you can read about discipline and extreme accountability and communication and um, sales. You know, we have a, a book list actually in the description of this video that that is an Amazon affiliate link. So if you click on any of those books and buy them, we get a kickback, F full disclosure. But there are books in there that will help you be a leader of men. And if you if you read those books and you take that shit to heart and you start applying the things that are in those books and you do a book a week over the course of a year, you're going to be 52% better. Even if you just learn one thing a week, yep. like you just you have to start doing the things 
that that make you a good man. And obviously that goes without saying because that's what you're asking. But if if you want to be, what are you doing now? You know what I mean? Like if you want to be a good man and you want to be a leader of men, what are you doing already to implement to make those changes happen? Because you have to be doing something. You can't just sit around and hope for it. It doesn't work that way. You have to start doing the work. Yep. That's like people who are expecting to win the lottery, but they don't buy a ticket. Yep. That's exactly it. I, I want that. When I die, that's what I want people to say at my funeral, yeah. that he was a good man. He was a leader of men. And I, and I do believe that I'm a servant. I believe that I'm here to do for others. And I, and I try. Um, obviously, I, I want to be successful and I want to you know reach my own goals. And, and I have my own aspirations that I'm, I'm trying to reach. But um, I don't want to do it by foul means. You know right. what I mean? Like I want to earn my shit, not definitely don't want it handed to me. <clears throat> but I also don't want to go about it the wrong way. Like I want it to be earned with merit and lessons, not from, you know, foul doing people dirty shit. Right. I agree with the feeling like you're a servant. Yeah. Yeah. On my part, you agree or you agree that that's what it takes to be a good man. Oh, I totally forgot that you were talking on being a good man. I was just, following your train of thoughts. And I was like, oh, I feel that way. <laughs> well, you're a good woman. Yeah. And, and and I think that part of that, especially in a marriage, is that you serve each other. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, we get a lot of people that, that get hung up on the Bible's aspect of, of women submit to your husbands. They don't read the next line, though. Right. You are supposed to submit to each other. You're supposed to serve each other. Yeah. And it's it it means more to be a servant than it does to serve, because simply serving is is doing being a servant is doing what the other person needs. You know what I mean? Like, right. I don't know. The way that you go above and beyond to provide for the household and protect us is why it's I go above and beyond to make sure the house is maintained and you're fed. Right. And would you do that if I wasn't doing the things that I'm doing? No, you can have a kid cuisine for dinner. <clears throat> yeah. A hunger man XL. Don't yeah. bitch in the microwave. Yeah. And, and that's, that's, I think where a lot of disconnect is in the emails that we get is you have somebody that really believes that they're doing everything they can with a partner that's doing absolutely nothing. Right. But I'm willing to bet that both of them are not doing anything. Right. And it's just easier to throw shade on the partner than it is to accept your shortcomings and start correcting the problems. You know, we see a lot that I'm doing everything I can. I think I'm the perfect wife. I think I'm the perfect husband. Have you asked? I, I ask you all the time, like, how am I doing as your wife? And you give me feedback. Yeah. And then I course correct if need be. You can't sit there and claim that you're this amazing spouse and you're doing everything you can to fix this relationship when you haven't even had the conversations right. to see if what you're doing is what they want. Right. Yeah, because if you're fixing the wrong things, it doesn't matter that you're fixing shit. Right. When the house foundation is broken, you don't paint the walls. Yeah. You, you, you said that uh, Discord had posted a video for us to react to of a woman who asked her man to get the yard or the house ready for Easter or something yeah, like that. Yeah, she asked for help around the house to get it ready for Easter. And he went outside and cut the grass and was weed eating and like making the yard look presentable. And right. he's waving at her through the window and she's inside making a TikTok, ripping him apart for doing the lawn. Yeah. Instead of being direct and be like, this is the things that I need you to do today so that we're ready. Yeah. You gave him an opportunity to serve you and he's doing it in the way that he believes needs served. Like he obviously recognized the yard was a mess. Right. And went out there to take care of it. I and mean, you know, I got to be honest, if we were doing something for the kids, the yard has to be maintained, especially if you're doing an Easter egg hunt. Like, right. You know, I, in that whole thread <clears throat> of thought, I was thinking, I said it into the discord. When women do things like that and say, I need help around the house, but I'm not as specific in what they need help with. The man is going to do what he thinks is going to help. Yep. That is in that instance, when a woman is not clear with what she wants and then it becomes an issue. That is why men say women just create problems. Yeah. And nag. Because had you just said, this is what I need you to do, he wouldn't have went and done those other things. Right. He would have done what you said. Hopefully. In the ideal situation where you guys are happy and healthy and communication is great, that's what's going to happen. Right. <clears throat> I only say hopefully because we, we, we do so many people on TikTok. I, I really don't engage in the comments like I used to. I, I will, until a video hits like 10,000 views, I'll go look at the comments because yeah. it's still new and there's not a lot there. But once the video starts blowing up, I'm not going to the comment section because all I see is people who are miserable as fuck. That's when it gets out of hand. Treating their partner like shit or complaining about their partner being miserable as fuck and they're not doing anything to fix it. And it's always, what do I do to fix him? Or what do I do to fix her? You don't fix anybody. What do you, you do work, on, work on yourself? Yeah, you work on you and hope to God that you are 
still worthy of saving because if you do all the work on yourself and they're too far gone, it doesn't matter what you do. Right. The trick is to get that shit corrected before it becomes a fucking problem. And that's where the check-ins come into play. It's no different than that last email. If you're having check-ins and there's shortcomings and they're able to be addressed immediately and you're able to move past them, they don't become long-term problems. Right. <clears throat> and then people are, well, what happens when they fall back into the same pattern? Well, you fucking remind them that right. we had to talk about this and we're not fucking doing that anymore. And then if it's a repetitive thing, you leave. And you can do that without nagging. You can. You can give positive nudges. And in fact, I'm willing to bet that if you were giving the positive affirmations while the changes were happening, they wouldn't regress. Right. Because if I'm doing something and getting those pat on the backs and the attaboys and the, the pee-pee touches, knowing that I'm doing, doing what I'm supposed to be doing, I'm going to continue doing that shit because my household's gotten a lot better. Right. But if, I, if I'm doing it and I'm not getting recognition and you're still bitching about things, like why would I want to try to be better Knowing that no matter what I do, my good enough isn't good enough. Right. And you know, your good enough becomes better with positive reinforcement. It does. In time. It's really not rocket science. It's, ugh, it's really not, man. You would, <clears throat> We don't even have degrees in this. We didn't go to school for this shit. These are things that we have learned through life experience and research and self-help books and everything we've done. You don't have to be a rocket scientist. Yeah. It is... Just plain human decency and be willing to understand somebody and get where they're coming from and put yourself in their shoes for a minute and just fucking comprehend. Yep. I'm, I'm going to say that it's like 80% accountability and 20% proper communication. Yeah. Because most people don't have enough accountability to own their faults. They want to throw blame on other people. Well, so-and-so did that and they did this and they made me feel this way and blah, 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 blah. No. No, they didn't make you feel anything. We remember that discussion at the beginning of the podcast? Yeah. All right. This email is called Requested from YouTube. So I am a 20-year-old college student currently on my own healing journey from growing up in a very broken home with no role models for what a healthy relationship or marriage should look like. I feel like my negative experiences led me into a very toxic and abusive, into very toxic and abusive relationships in my teenage years. I had to learn a lot of lessons the hard way, and I commented on your The Sideshow Narcissist episode. Okay. Here is the direct quotation of what I commented. Would you guys ever make a video discussing dating in your early 20s and how to approach it healthily? I am someone who comes from a very broken home, from a very broken family model, and have watched my parents go through four different divorces, edit from each other as well from other new partners that they brought into my life. I really desire a healthy family. Everything that you watched your parents do, don't do that. Right. That sounds really fucking simple, right? It's not, though. My success in business, because I had never ran a business, I don't have business management. I, I worked in the industry that I opened a business in, and I watched other shop owners fuck up over and over and over again until I opened my own shop. And everything that I watched them do that I felt was wrong, when I opened my business, I made it a point not to do that. Right. You have, a, you have, whether it's a good or bad, you have a, a, um, an example placed before you of how a relationship looks. You got a blueprint. Right. And you know that in all of that toxic bullshit, none of that works. You know in your previous relationships, none of that fucking works. It's all a problem. Don't do those things. Don't be with people who do those things. Don't right. try to change them. Don't try to rationalize what they're doing because you love them. The moment you notice a red flag, you walk away. I or, wouldn't even bring it up. You wouldn't even bring it up? I wouldn't even bring it up. Hmm. If I notice something that I've experienced in my past abusive relationships, and it was the first step that's going to lead to step 10 where things get nasty, I'm walking away on that first step. Yeah. I would address things. I wouldn't. Because there are people that do shit and don't realize what they're doing is bad. She's a prime example of that with all that toxic shit she learned growing up. That's just learned behavioral traits. Yeah. And until she saw our, our videos, like she was trying to learn and do our own shit. And like, she's now looking to us as guidance on like way to have a healthy relationship. And if, if those learned behavioral traits are go unchecked, yeah, it's just solidified over and over and over again. And if it's early on in the relationship and it's not something that has become a major issue, mm -hmm. you can be like, Hey, I don't like it when you do that. And then if they do it again, be like, it's been addressed. This is way too early for us to be having problems right now. Deuces. I'm thinking of like dudes throwing beer bottles against walls and shit. Oh, yeah. You're, you're at an extreme. 
I, I wouldn't stay around for anything like that. I wouldn't stay around for somebody raising their voice. If I, I was it, about to say, if someone starts yelling at me during an argument, I'm leaving. Yeah, same, same. I, but that's there's um there's an emotional maturity that we have that a lot of people don't. Yeah. You know, I I really really try not to ever raise my voice, uh, and it's because I don't like the way it feels when people yell at me. So I know if I feel that way, why do, why would I want to do that to somebody else? It's not going to make me heard. It's not going to make you understand what I'm saying while I'm fucking screaming in your face. <clears throat> So, but even then in that scenario, if, if you and I were dating still and not married and living together and we got into an argument and you started yelling, I would just be like, why are you yelling at me? Right. And then if you didn't check it, I would leave. Yeah. But I would give you the opportunity to correct your behavior because sometimes in the moment people don't realize they're doing that. Now, if somebody's throwing something or flipping tables or, or punching holes in the wall, that's a whole different ball game because at that point you're showing me that you cannot emotionally control your um, actions. It's not a matter of because you punch in a hole in the wall is a decision. That's not right. something you do out of anger. You're doing that because you don't know how to to voice your anger. You're doing this. And, and because you're doing that, it's really starting to piss me off. Instead, you punch a fucking hole in the wall like you are emotionally defunct. Yeah. If you do that kind of shit, I wouldn't even tolerate someone <clears throat> calling me names. I, yeah, I wouldn't either. Why would why would you want to be with somebody who looks at you and does that shit? Right. That's why I said I wouldn't even address it. I would just leave. Yeah. You know what you did. I would still address it like, hey, don't talk to me like that. Like, I, I don't deserve that. We're, we're not going to treat each other like that. I would always give the the first warning and then I'm gone after that. Unless it's a violent scenario. I would do a first warning, but there's no back and forth unless you apologize. Yeah, I agree. Like, why are you yelling at me? If it's not, I'm sorry, I'm yelling at you. Let me fix it. If you just continue yelling at me because you're a stupid bitch, I'm out. Yeah. yeah. There's yep. not a back and forth after that. I agree. My generation, Gen Z, also has a really negative view on traditional marriage slash having children, and I don't want to fall victim to that. I'm sorry. Gen Z has a negative outlook on having kids? Is that a thing? Yeah, it is. Are they not having children? <clears throat> They're not. Huh. They're not. They're actually, the birth rate is decreasing. Good for them. They're practicing the process right. of having a baby without but actually having a baby. That's smart. Yeah. Well, it's I mean, almost like they've learned something from everybody well, I, else. Yeah. I would rather people fucking, you know, not procreate than right. fucking procreate and bring fucked up kids into the world. 100%. You know, I, I read something the other day that said one in 36 kids are born with autism now. And they're saying that by 2050, it'll be one in two. I believe that. Because of the shit that they're putting in our food and, and mm. like the things that we're doing to our bodies. When you think about it, three out of the four people in our household are diagnosed autistic. So, yep. The only normal one's a three-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I, I don't, we, we talked a little bit about the whole traditional relationship thing and I, I, and like I touched on it and I want to touch on it again. Um, I realize that when people hear traditional values, they, they shun us. They do. Yeah. And they want to, they want to talk shit about our relationship and they want to judge us and have their little opinions. It is no different when people shit on our relationship, then if somebody's gay and you shit on their relationship. Yeah. Because you are taking a decision that they're making to do something with their life that makes them happy and you are fucking shitting on them for it. Yeah. And when you look at it that way, congratulations, you're a bigot. Yep. I, I would say that is definitely bigot action. Yep. Bigot, bigot mindset. Tree. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do something real quick. Um, for everyone that is on TikTok that wants to know where I get my shirts from... Um, I am working on a deal with these guys to try to get a, co a code. Yeah. Um, I sent in all my paperwork. I'm just waiting on a response. Believe me, if I get a response from them and I can like rep their brand, you guys are going to get sick of this shit <laughs> because I have almost every t-shirt the company makes. Yeah. I fucking love their clothing. So I'm going to give them a week to respond. And if by Thursday of next week, which is when we record episode 19, if they haven't responded yet, I'm probably still going to just shoot them a plug. Okay. So be patient. I know you like my shirts. <laughs> I'm sure there are plenty of other people in my shoes that would benefit a lot from hearing your perspective. You guys are the role models I wish I had growing up and are helping me so much in my healing journey. I am among many people who appreciate everything you are doing for your listeners. Thank you for your help. It made my day to see your reply to my comment. P.S. I love hearing you guys plug BJJ as a sport all the time. What is that? Brazil, uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Oh, she's a purple belt yep. and, and runs a kids program. Yeah. That's so cool. So remember earlier what I said about being a leader of men? She's doing that. By, by, by taking that role 
of a purple belt in a Brazilian jiu-jitsu school and teaching a children's program, she is teaching those children discipline. Right. She is one of those people that those kids are going to look up to. I did a lot of martial arts when I was younger, and I know I can tell you every single one of my instructor's names still. Yeah. And it's been 20 years since I did any of that shit. Um, you will have an impact on those children's lives far beyond what you, you think. Oh, God, yeah. They're going to be in their 30s and look back at that time and say, yeah. I have to remember what she told me. Yep. And, and that's a big deal. Um, I also think that it's very crazy that people fangirl over our replies. Oh, me too. Uh, every time I, I got, I, I made a post this morning on my Facebook page that I finally hit 800,000 on TikTok, And one of my buddies, um, who's been a friend of mine for like 12 years, 13 years was like, I saw one of your videos on a snap Snapchat story. He's like, you guys have gone viral. That blows my fucking mind. Yeah. Two nights ago, um, somebody who's been a client of mine since before I opened the shop, Posted one of my videos. Yeah. And I commented on it because like I know them. Somebody's like, oh my God, they're local. <laughs> yeah. Blows my mind. I have people <coughs> coming out of the woodwork that I haven't heard from in 10 years yeah. saying your shit just popped up on whatever feed I'm on. I'm having a uh, screenshot sent from TikToks I made a year ago. Yeah. That are blowing up on other websites. That's crazy. It is crazy. I want to, uh, I, I actually think that I might delete some of those older TikToks or make them go private and then re-upload them because there's value in some of those older videos. Right. And there's things that like I'd like to show off, like the um, If the World Was Ending video that we did. Yeah. That video makes me cry when I watch it. Yep. I love you. Why am I so emotional? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... Would we ever make a video discussing dating in your early 20s? Um, I mean, that's kind of what we do. All of these videos can apply to that. Yeah. You know, I, I think that I think that being a gentleman is a lost art. I agree. And I think that dating is also a lost art. Courting. Courting, right. I You going to go again? No, I'm just going through it. And I just recognized when I was coughing, my arm tensed and I could see the definition of my shoulder. I'm like, you bad bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going through it. You can continue. I, I would like to point out how much you talk shit about how fat your face is getting. And then you're like, look at my arms. Look, babe, look at this. Rah, 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 rah. Because it is gathering in my face. It's, this yeah. little spot right here on my neck doesn't help because it looks like a double chin. Yeah. It could be water because you've been sick. It could be a lot of things, but you are getting definition in other parts of your body. So you're obviously not getting fat. You. <laughs> I'm watching it on the camera. I can see it. Yeah, so, I know, you're right. So when it comes to the dating thing, um, it, and we talked about this, I think, in, in episode 17, or maybe it was in the frustrated episode, that um, people don't, men don't know how to talk to women anymore. Correct. And women allow it to happen. Correct. So when a man shoots you a text message or a, a DM, and he's, hey, ma, love that booty, or sends a dick picture, yeah. and you engage because he's got a good-looking profile photo, too, you are encouraging that behavior. Right. If you were to, as a woman, because you guys determine sex, <clears throat> if you were to put your foot down and stop tolerating less than for men, men would step their fucking game up. Yep. Because we don't have accountability yep. in the dating game and we can do all the same shit because sex is on the table no matter what on the first date now, there's no reason for us to try to be better as men. And all of the women who do that, who put up with that behavior, you're ruining it for the rest of us. Right. You're making it so hard to find quality men because men realize, oh, I can just slide into her DMs, get some, and then just dip out. Yep. And yep. it's a repetitive behavior because repeatedly women will allow the same man to do this. It happens in yep. friend groups. You, yeah, it does. You know, they say that, um, I don't remember where I saw it, but it said that the men on Twitter, like there's like a top... 15 or 20% of men on, on um, Tinder, not Twitter, Tinder are the ones that get viewed and like get the most dates. And it's the same type of person over and over and over again. And those men are able to run through multiple women and live that life and do that thing because of the appearance that they have that most women want. But as long as those men, the 10 or 20% that are, are being sought after by women, allow them the men to do what they're doing, there's not going to ever be a change. And women aren't going to give the friend zone guys a, a shot. They're going to go after the type that they've been going after. And if you always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you've always got. Yep. 
And if you go after a certain type of man over and over again, and you're constantly in relationships where you're being abused or being treated poorly or cheated on, or they've got a corn addiction or you're being slapped around, and that's the process over and over again, you're the common denominator there. Yeah. Why don't you find better men? Yeah, why don't you raise your standards? It really sucks when you're in super shitty situations like that and you recognize that you allow yourself to be in situations like that because you didn't walk away the first time he punched a hole in the wall or you didn't walk away the first time he called you a bitch. You didn't set your boundaries the first time he commented something inappropriate on another woman's photos. Right. Or you did and then he guilt tripped you and you fell for it because you, you're in love. You know that with the way feminism is, and you see it on all these fucking stupid podcasts where like the whatever podcast where the guy is just dropping facts on the, the feminists and like the just pearly things and, and all of the podcasts where they're basically just shitting on women. Um, when you watch those podcasts, the women that are on the round, those tables all have the same mindset. Yeah. And that's why the one man is able to, to make them all look like idiots. If you had two women in a group of seven that had standards that stood their fucking ground and did not let the group think influence their decision. Eventually it would be four out of that seven or five out of that seven. And then you'd have two hoes instead of a table full of them. Right. And you would, you would be able to start to directly influence the way the dating game is going. Men would start working to be better men because the standards would be raised. And in order for them to compete in a market, they have no choice but to raise their standards. They would have to step their game up. Back in the day, a man who lived at home with his mom wasn't getting a fucking date. I promise you. Now now we're getting emails where like, he's got two kids and lived at home with his mom and I married him. And we moved in. And yeah. now I have to deal with all of this. Right. The higher your standards are as a woman for men. The better men are going to be. The better men are going to be. Dave Chappelle said that men would live in a cardboard box if we thought we could pull pussy in a cardboard box. So men get comfortable surroundings. Let me tell you something. If a man could fuck a woman in a cardboard box, he wouldn't buy a house. The reason why men have nice cars and nice houses is because women like nice heart cars and nice houses. Yep. You want it, if you want the dating game to change, you have to set standards and then abide by them. I get asked so, so much on my TikToks, how did I get a man like you? Where do I find a man like you? You raise your fucking standards. Yeah. You don't settle for less. There are times where I've challenged who you thought you were as a person. Yeah. It's healthy. It is. If I didn't do that and you continued being who you were, we wouldn't work. I also think that if we would have started courting and you would have put out on the first night or tried. Yeah. No. We wouldn't have went to where we were. Yeah. I, I don't because I don't respect that. Right. And, and and you can judge me for that if you want. I don't, I don't respect anyone who fucks on the first date. I, I don't respect men who ask for it on the first date. Right. And I, I didn't, it. I didn't, yeah. you know, um, there's a buildup and an anticipation and, um, an excitement that yeah. comes from all of that. Like, I don't know. It, the dating pool is fucking full of mold. It's just it, a septic it, tank it, at this point. Yeah, it looks like a, a, a swimming pool in a trailer park. It's yeah. pretty bad. I would not get in it. I'm good. I'm good on all that. Yeah. I'm so glad I'm not in the dating game. You know, people want to judge us because we're an age gap relationship. I'm not stuck doing what y'all are doing right now. So that age gap thing. I understand that there can be manipulation that happens in those relationships. Right. But when I tell you that men mature slower than women. Oh, 100 percent. They do. I still fart and giggle. Yeah. At 42 years old, I make fart jokes and I will crop dust people in Target. Like I, I farts are funny. I'm a giant fucking child. Yeah. And in terms of maturity, the things that we find funny, you in your you know late 20s, almost 30s and me in my early 40s is same. The only difference is, is I've built a life over the last decade that you haven't got to live yet. Right. And because I have that responsibility, there's a, um, a mutual respect in what we do in the home because of that. Right. And if I was a 40 year old neck beard who lived in his mom's basement and I happened to land a woman like you, it wouldn't last. No, because there's nothing there. there I, I don't have anything of value to offer you. I I'm an immature man. I am not, not, that's not a hypothetical. I am fucking immature. Yeah, you are. <clears throat> um, I make sex jokes every opportunity I get. I do. Um, but I also have my shit together and I want, more 
Right. And I want to provide and protect and lead. And I'm also that guy. Like I, I can be a very calm individual, but you know that I can be that motherfucker if I have to, right. and I'm okay with it. Um, but most of those neckbeards who live in their mom's basement don't have that. Right. They've never had to have that. They rely on mommy and daddy to take care of their needs. And like, I've never had that luxury. Yeah. So, you know, I think there's a differentiation too, when it comes to you making sex jokes, because it's not inappropriate jokes about other women or about how you're lusting after other women and all this other. No, they're all all to you. Right. They're inappropriate. Right. They're definitely inappropriate, but that (laughs) there's a difference when you're doing it with your woman versus doing it with the boys directed at other women when your wife is back home. Yeah. You know, and when going back, just the neck beard thing, a neck beard couldn't handle me. No, I a, agree. A man living in his basement with his mom could not handle this. I will make you hate who you are. And, and to be clear, that's not a sexual thing. It's not a sex thing. No, it's thing. not a sex I thing. I have to say that because there's women out there who are like, you can't handle this, talking about their VJJ. And that's not at all what you're talking about. No. It's your, your strength of character. I will mentally break a man like that. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. I'm going to have expectations that he will never be able to meet and I will make you feel like shit about it. I'm getting too aggressive. Yeah, I was just thinking like if I was to say that about a woman, I would get a ton of hate. Yeah. But I feel that way about women too. Yeah. If you are a subpar woman and you are mooching off of your parents and you're expecting a man to swoop in and come and pay for everything for you. Yeah. Really? Come on. Well, I meant... Are you a three-year-old or are you still... (coughs) Planning your dream princess wedding and shit right. too, expecting your man to pay for all of that. I, it's going to be all about you and fuck what he wants. I meant the breaking them mindset. Oh, because you know that's I would be called a narcissist and controlling and a toxic male and toxic masculinity and every fucking buzzword name in the book. It's just called standard. Would be thrown at me if I would have phrased that the way you did. But I also be it, it's different. This is one of those things where men and women are different, right? Because if a man was able to land you and you held him to that standard and broke him because he was weak and unable to live to that standard, it's different than if I was to try to go for a woman like that, because it would be nothing than a, more than a plaything. There'd be no real sustenance there. It would literally be a smash and grab. Right. I'm not trying to do anything beyond a one night stand with somebody that doesn't have any, not that I'm trying to do that, but you know what I mean? Right. Like that's, that's a man's mindset. And, and most men, I guess I can't even say that because dating culture is not like that anymore. So I was about to throw out some old school thinking. Oh. And it doesn't apply because everybody just swipes now. Oh, God. You know, I really don't realize how advanced technology is now. Like, I've stopped learning new things and new apps and everything that comes out. I have too. So much so that Zeke is doing all of our Discord shit and helping with my affiliate programs. And, like, I just don't care. I can build computers. I just don't want to. I I don't want to deal with it. It's not worth it to me. Next email. Sure. Intentional separation. Okay. Wait a minute. Why are we getting an email called intentional separation? I don't know. If you intended that and you're separated, you did it to yourself. Next. I'm kidding. Read read, read the email. So (coughs) we both have toxic family members, but who doesn't? As a couple, we have made the intentional decision to separate ourselves from people, even family, who repeatedly disrespect our spouse. That's healthy as a motherfucker. That is not where I expected that to go. Right. I don't mean issues of I don't like her shirt, but larger problems such as trying to physically fight or spread rumors. We're often met with, well, don't forget, that's only, that's the only mother he has, or you wouldn't forgive your brother and let it go, or you need to forgive your brother and let it go. This, so I, I picked this email because of that that those statements. Okay. When you marry somebody, you are starting your own family. You're not marrying into theirs. Right. You are choosing the person that you want to spend the rest of your life with. Your mom is going to die one day. Yeah. Your brother is going to die one day. And if you choose somebody to be your lifelong partner and you exchange vows and you create a covenant with God and you're going to get married and live that life and the other people who have been in your life this entire time is not happy for you and is disrupting your home life intentionally, they need to be removed. Correct. There is not a redeemable scenario in that entire thing. You get one warning. Uh-huh. That is my wife. You will not disrespect her like that again. And if you do, you will not be here. Right. Period. I don't give a shit if, 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 if their mom or brother or cousin or dad or uncle. Blood means nothing other than you share DNA bond. Right. But you can be a piece of shit. That doesn't mean I'm going to let you in my life. If you had an uncle who was a child molester and you had right. kids 
and Christmas came, would you leave your kids in the room with that uncle? Would you even invite him over there? Would you even let him touch them? Yeah. Would you let them give a hug? Right. If DNA mattered as much as everyone thinks it matters, then mothers would not be able to abort their children. Fathers would not be able to abandon their kids because relationships were bad because they would have that DNA bond that makes you connected to that person. There wouldn't be any drug addict parent. Yeah. That's all a myth. That's, that is a manipulation tactic to make you accept shitty behavior from the people that are DNA bonded to you. Yep. Fuck that. Yep. I got no issues cutting people out of my life. Yep. Got a pair of scissors in my back pocket all the time. Set of matches too. I'll watch a bridge burn and roast some bacon over it at the same time. Yep. Let the bridges I burn light my path. Yep. Blow a kiss as it goes. Toodles. I'm going to go watch the sunset while you cry on the other side. <laughs> we got fruit and food over here and sustenance. Yep. Your, yours is dying over there. It's toxic and gross and yeah, I'm good. You know, burning a bridge gets rid of their easy access to you. Now, if you want to swim across that roaring river and come talk to me, then we can talk. But you're not going to have that easy access and the comfort yeah. of crossing a bridge to get to me. With anymore. that metaphor, would you mean, does that mean that in order for them to cross that choppy water that they have to put in work? Yeah. That's exactly what I mean by that. That's good. I like it. I just made that up. Go you. Mm. Big old sexy brain. Thank you. I was waiting for you to say it. I needed that recognition. I've been off my game for a week, so I need, <laughs> I need the validation that I'm coming back to it. The sickness is real. <laughs> I don't agree with it. I feel like it's my job to make sure that he is respected as my husband. Yep. Even if for no other reason than he's my choice and vice versa. That's it. That's it. I don't, fuck, I don't know what you needed from that email. Validation. You're you, fucking right. You're yeah, doing it. You got it. My whole body's hot. Yes, it is. And I'm sweaty. Oh, my God. Thank you. Wow. Chicka, wow, wow. <laughs> when I was looking for that clip for TikTok today, I, I landed on Alvin and the Chipmunks, but all I could find was the Axe commercials. Yeah. You remember those old commercials where the lady was in the supermarket and she's like, bow, chicka, wow, yeah. wow. <laughs> I, I was going to use that one, but it was super pixelated and blurry. That sucks. <clears throat> do you want to do another one? Yep. We got time. Where are we at? Hour and 40 minutes. You sound so much better than I do. <laughs> I'm so jealous of your immune system. Uh, I mean, I still feel like garbage. Right, but you're handling it so well. Is that just all mental? I think so. Because as, as soon as we stopped recording, I laid down. Huh. As soon as we're done between the time we finish this and the time that we record tonight at 7, I will be laying down again. Okay. Looking for advice. Hi there. I listen to snippets of your podcast on TikTok, and I feel that with my situation, you guys can provide some outside input. I'm willing to bet if you watched more than snippets and went to YouTube and actually watched the content, whatever you're sending us has probably been answered already. Let's find out. Yeah. Go team. I've been with my husband going on almost eight years, married for five come September. We have three children together, but I've mentally checked out. Our intimate life isn't the same and I just don't want to with him anymore. His actions towards me and his... His action towards me... And his children plays a huge role. I thought these were your guys' kids. Oh. So they're just his kids. Are you a stepmom? No, I'm sure that they're, they're our kids. But because of the way the email is being worded, she's weaponizing the children. Well, with that phrasing, I'm assuming she's a stepmother. Okay. Because that's what I get from that. You don't claim they're not your children. They're only his children if you did not give birth to them. Right. All right. So stepmom. Our intimate life. You salty bitch. <laughs> I am salty. I hope that hurts feelings. Do you hear how stupid that sounds? Yep. We've addressed this in the past too. Yep. There are kids when things are good. They're my kids when there's a problem. They're his kids when there's an issue. Yeah. So going forward, if you guys want to phrase things vindictively, I'm going to be vindictive too. Oh, that's an eye for an eye. But I'm making you realize you sound silly. Oh, no, now I'm it's, struggling It's not an this. eye for it's an not. eye. It's an intentional slight to let you know how you sound. Okay. It is enhanced sarcasm to prove a point. You're not hurting anyone. You are, you are doing the same thing that they're doing just so that they can hear how they sound. Okay. <clears throat> sarcastic correction. Um, sarcastic behavioral correction. How about that? I like that. SBC. 
Yes, he helps around the house, but he expects a thank you or recognition every time. Oh. So have you ever told him thank you when he helps around the house? Like if he comes home from work and he just worked a 12 hour shift and he's exhausted and he stops and does the dishes. Have you ever said thank you? Why should you not show your partner gratitude? Right. It's called polite behavior. If somebody does something for you, you say thank you. If somebody does something that's going to improve your life, you say thank you. If somebody says thank you, you say you're welcome. It, it is not hard to be a decent human being and show gratitude when somebody goes out of their way to do something. Right. Because if he wasn't doing the dishes, you'd be complaining that he's not doing the dishes. Yeah. So instead of him doing the dishes and, and, and not getting gratitude, there's not a win there for him. So why would he want to go above and beyond? Because, I mean, after all, why should he expect gratitude? Right. I appreciate the manners that we have between you and I. I really do. Because even though I know that those manners are are sincere, when you thank me for doing something, it is a sincere thank you. If I was taken for granted, granted, and everything that I did was expected of me, I would feel like a slave. Right. Doesn't that sound like slavery? You have a job that you do, you do the fucking job, whether, whether there's gratitude or not. You can't expect a thank you. Yeah. Because it's your job. Right. Or instead, hey, I really appreciate that you did the dishes tonight. Right. You know, I can tell she's only watched snippets because we're really tearing her apart because this is everything we've already touched on. Yeah. So. I picked this email because of that. Yeah. Because of the gratitude thing. Right. It's real fucking easy to say thank you. It is. You guys are ungrateful motherfuckers, man. They People really <clears throat> are. I, I have no sympathy in this moment reading this email. You are treating him just as poorly as you think he is treating you. You we, get what you receive. You have a viral video of thanking for going to work. I do, yeah. You thank me for providing. It's yeah. my job. And if you weren't here, I would still have to do that. Right. But knowing that you appreciate that I do that makes me want to take it to the next level. It makes me want to work that much harder. It makes knowing that I have to go and put in the hours that I have to put in and do the things that I'm doing that much better because it's fucking appreciated. That gratitude, even though small, goes a real fucking long way with people. You're talking about the one I have pinned on my page. I'm crying, right? That has almost 3 million views. Yeah. I think like 10,000 comments. And those comments are a mixture of, I love what you guys have. How do I get this? I want to be that wife. And she's manipulating him by crying in that moment. Oh my God. Really? Yeah. I have people in my comments saying that I'm manipulating you, that I'm a liar, that I'm probably cheating on you behind your back, all wow. of this shit. It's all men. Of course it is. It's all men. Because they, they don't know how to treat their women. Yeah. Unreal. That just blows my mind. You know how hard it would be for you to cheat on me? Like, just for a minute, just think about how busy our lives are and the fact that the only time we are not in the same room together is if one of us is taking a poop. That is true. I thought you meant how hard mentally. I'm like, no, I can barely handle me and then no, us. I, like, I mean, without all of that, like just right. based purely on the time that we have apart from each other. Right. Yeah. You know fucking hard it would be for you to cheat on me. You know, you also we have um, location. location shared. Yeah. If I ever shut off my location, I know immediately you're going to be like, what the fuck? Yeah. Not that you watch that shit or something, but if I'm gone for an hour and a half. I have not, not ever once checked the location thing. Really? No, nope, because if I need you, I just call and you answer the phone. Yeah. If I called you and you didn't answer the phone and like 30 minutes later you call me back, I'm, what the fuck were you doing? Right. 30 minutes is a long time. Unless you're at work. Then I just look at the cameras and be like, oh, she's piercing. Yeah. <laughs> I don't do the location services thing. No. It makes me feel like a stalker. Yeah. The only re- reason I want that location <coughs> thing turned on is if I'm ever kidnapped and I yeah. can't call or text you, but you can track my phone. Yeah. Well, then, I mean, in that scenario, wouldn't they just tell me your last location? Because if they kidnap you, they're not letting you keep your phone. I mean, if they take it, but they keep it on their person. And I have explained to him that, no, you're not going to get a cookie for doing the dishes. That's your job as it is mine. We're partners in this. We do this together. You seeking approval or rejection just shows you think it's my job to do and you're just helping. Wow. And you wonder why you don't have intimacy in your relationship. You treat your partner like shit. He does the same. And then you wonder why you feel like that. You know how easy it is just be like, hey, I appreciate everything that you do in the house. Right. Hey, you're a good dad. I'm proud of you for going to work. Like, just be polite. Um, that book that I'm reading right now talks about how you can have long-term relationships with your best friends, 30, 40 years. Like, you have them in your life forever because right. you don't try to control them. That's controlling. Oh, that is very controlling. She's controlling that situation. 
He lives here too. It's his job just as much as it is mine. Do the fucking dishes. Right. That is a controlling mindset. If it was your best friend, you would give your best friend the choice. Like, hey, do you mind helping me? And whether they do or they don't, you accept that as their decision because you're not trying to control them. Right. When you're married and you have kids, you claim ownership over them. And it's a lot easier to try to manipulate them and make them do the things that you don't want to do or that they don't want to do because you see ownership. Right. The difference between you and I and our relationship is that there is no ownership there. When you do things for me, I'm fucking grateful for it. You know how dope it is that I don't have to worry about laundry? And like, I never have to worry about being un- out of underwear ever. But I also know that in the event that you're not feeling well, I'm going to take care of the house. I'm going to do the things that need to be done because we're a team. Right. And I'll still do everything that I was supposed to be doing that is the described job while helping those things. But you thank me for all of those things. I do. Hey, thanks for taking care of the taxes. Hey, I want to buy some new dresses. There's some money in your account. Thanks, babe. I really appreciate that. That really stuck in your mind, me thanking you for the taxes, didn't it? Yeah. Because you've been bringing that up a lot. Because because it's not a choice. Yeah. It's not a choice. You don't have a choice about paying taxes. You you pay the government for the right to fucking work or they'll put you in jail. And there's a fucking level of stress there that I hate. And I have an accountant and dealing with the accountant even is stressful. So knowing that you are grateful that you don't have to go deal with that shit and that you see the hard work and the efforts that I'm putting in to make sure that our life is is good, it's gratitude. You thanking me for that I'm like, fuck yeah, I'm doing a thing. She's proud of me. Like, I'll peacock a little bit. If you were like, go do the taxes. If you don't, you're going to go to jail. What the fuck is wrong with you? Right. It'd be like, fuck you, bro. Like, help me with the taxes. It's your, you got to do them too. You live here also. You know how fucking stupid that sounds? The fuck out of here. This is. Be better. Look in the mirror. Definitely be better. This is the kind of woman that we scrutinize on the podcast. Yep. This is the woman that I strive not to be. <clears throat> and I don't care how bad things have gotten in the years of your marriage and everything that he has done wrong to you. When you have that mindset of, well, if he's going to act like that, I don't care anymore. I'm going to do what I want. Yep. You are sinking down to his level. Now it is just you two at the bottom of the barrel throwing mud at each other. And up there, there's a fucking staircase you guys can climb to get out of this barrel but neither of you wants to go first. Yep. So instead of one of you just walking up the damn stairs, you're going to continue to throw mud like children. Yep. One of you has to stop the cycle and being a better, being the bigger person is not a problem. It's not. <laughs> and if you view being the bigger person as an inconvenience or a problem, why do I always have to be the bigger person? Because you want your fucking life to be good. Right. And, and it doesn't matter if he doesn't ever do it or she doesn't ever do it. One of you has to be the bigger person. And if one person decides that they're going to be the bigger person and they're that way every single time, that big ass fire that you're throwing gasoline on while arguing eventually is going to be embers and you'll be able to step over it. And yeah. who is the bigger person then is not going to matter because you're no longer dealing with a fire. It's not fucking hard. What are you, what are you doing over there? So I actually made a note of why should I be the bigger person? Oh. And I made this note... Three months ago, and it is now time for this note to come out of the abyss of my phone. Okay. Why should you be the bigger person? Because if you don't, you're going to lose your life. Yeah. You're going to lose your husband. You're going to lose your wife. You're going to lose seeing your kids every day. You're going to lose the person that you were once head over heels for, the one that <coughs> you would get butterflies for. When their name would pop on the phone, you would smile. When you chose not to be the bigger person, you're throwing all of that away yeah. because you're upset with each other. Could you imagine destroying your life because you're not willing to swallow your pride? No, I couldn't. I could not. I'm not that weak of a person. I'm not either. I'm not either. Like that ego shit really, really gets to me. That's yeah. why I have the ego kills talent stickers. Like to believe that you can do no wrong and not take accountability and choose to fucking destroy your marriage. Unacceptable. Is, is bullshit. You don't get to play the victim in that scenario because you're just as fucking guilty. Yeah. So him, he, he's not seeking approval or recognition. He wants you to see that he's fucking helping you. He is trying to do right by you. He's trying to make you happy. He's doing the things that you complain and nag about constantly that you never shut up about. And when he does it, well, you should have done that two weeks ago. Yeah. Tell me you how you live here. Yeah. Tell me how that's going to make him want to do it again. So what you're doing is <clears throat> just creating problems. 
I could never be with somebody who is as negative as this. Yeah. I couldn't. Uh, and, and to be fair. Well, to be fair. Oh, don't say to be fair. I hate when people say to be fair. Oh, to be fair. To be fair. To be fair. To be fair. Uh, to be fair. To be fair. Oh, to be fair. Uh, to be fair. To be fair. To be fair. To be fair. I don't know his side of things because we don't get his side of the email. Right. But it, you know how easy it would be for him to be like, can you just stop fucking complaining all the time? Right. Like, you see that I'm doing something. Why don't you just say thank you for helping me? Because even if it's not your job and it is our job, you simply saying thank you versus it's about time yeah. is going to give you a different fucking response. You know, in those moments, I said this the other day to some to, per, to people in our personal life. The moment that you want to get angry and frustrated and you want to yell and call names and be nasty is the moment you need to shut the fuck up and just hold your person. That's it. Don't say anything. Don't throw anything. Don't walk away. If you want to leave, stop. And just embrace them and hold them for one minute. Yep. There's uh, physiological changes that happen to the body with a one minute embrace. It does. I don't want to have to ask for simple things. As a husband and father, you should be able to do it yourself without me telling you. I'm just tired and I want to walk away, but my children love him so much. Even when he loses his temper, they still love him. That's their innocence, but I'm no longer in love. That's not their innocence. That is their unconditional love for their father. Right. Women do not love unconditionally. They love they love on conditions. It is 100% on conditions. Yeah. If you, if you can provide, if you can do all the household chores and you can be a good father and, and you're useful, a woman will love you. When you can't do all of that, bye. She's yeah. going to find someone else who can. Only women, children, and dogs are loved unconditionally. This is, they've been together for eight years, married for five, and now she's bored. Yeah. So I'm going to go leave you and find somebody else. And they're going to, he's going to step in and he's going to father your children. And you're going to yeah. be left in the dust. Yep. And how is that going to work? You're going to throw away almost a decade of your life instead of trying to correct the problems because you see him as the problem and you're not willing to be the bigger person. You're going to throw away your marriage. You're going to destroy your kids. And, and they say that within a year, one year of a divorce only 14% of men still see their children. After two years, it's less than that. Yep. And it's not because they don't want to see their kids. It's because of the vindictive nonsense that happens between the woman and the man that fucking starts becoming about an income and becoming about, you know, manipulation tactics. And if you want to see the kids, you're going to buy me a new car. All that bullshit. My <clears throat> kid's dad is so lucky I'm not that person. Yeah. I could have really fucked up his life. I wouldn't have been with you if you were that person in that scenario. Like if I it, couldn't imagine being that person. Because yeah. I have kids. Like right. I, I have a daughter who's in her 20s. And if I would have seen you treating him that way, it would have triggered my past with my ex and I wouldn't have wanted to, I wouldn't have pursued you. That that being a decent human being goes a long fucking way. It really does. And it <clears throat> it literally takes nothing. You don't have to put it on a credit card. You don't have to spend cash. You don't have to take time out of your day. A five second text message. Thank you. Yeah. Be polite. It's crazy. So crazy. Let's go to the next one. Oh, we're done with this? No, I am. I got okay. nothing. There's there's nothing redeemable there. She's the problem. He he's the problem. They're both the problem. Them them not willing to be the bigger person in that scenario. I got there's I'm I'm next. Okay. Next. Next. All right. This one is called advice for a Patreon supporter. Okay. Which we normally do exclusively for Patreon, but this was buried from March in our February from February. So I checked; <clears throat> she is still a Patreon supporter. So thank you for that. Hell yeah, thank you. Um, but we Sorry. didn't get to her email because it was buried in with the other emails. So yeah. Alrighty, my husband and I have been together since we were sixteen, and I've been through so much together. This year is seven together and married for two. We have three children together. Oldest is four, and the third one is arriving in May, currently seven and a half months pregnant. We both grew up in broken homes with divorced parents and on and off weekends. So from the beginning, we agreed we were going to try and give our children the childhoods we always wanted. Okay, pause. That's the wrong mentality. Okay. That's, that is not how you give your kids that life. <clears throat> Read that again and, and let that process for a minute. We both grew up in broken homes with divorced parents and on slash off weekends. Right. So from the beginning, we agreed we we're going to try and give our children the childhoods we always wanted. And how are you going to do that? 
by putting your partner first and loving them unconditionally, working through all the problems till death do us part in sickness and health for better or for worse, doing the fucking work. Your kids are going to have a dope fucking life if mom and dad are on the same page and working to strive for greatness. The kids are going to benefit from that. Yeah. Our kids float between two homes. That has the exact same values. Exact same values. We're on the same page on everything. Yep. Even though dad and I are not together anymore, we still have a good relationship. And they see mom and dad as a united front with a stepdad and a stepmom who step behind us and agree. Right. So even though we are broken homes... It's cohesive. The The importance of co-parenting when people are divorced, you are setting an expectation of how you're supposed to live your life as an adult for those kids. Yeah. His upbringing was a lot harsher than mine. He was the abuse sponge in the household. His stepdad would physically abuse him and his mom would emotionally and mentally abuse and manipulate him. There were multiple occasions he would be told he's not allowed to show emotions or what he was feeling was invalid. And there's no reason he should feel that way, or he's not allowed to feel these emotions. One Saturday, he was sitting in his room playing video games, and his stepdad and mom were fighting. And then his stepdad came into the room, knocked over his bookshelf, and yelled at him, clean it up. So he started cleaning up the books, and not fast enough for his stepdad, and he got the shit beat out of him. I think we've read this. This does sound familiar. Okay. Are we going to keep going? Yeah, I mean, I'm committed at this point. Okay. Maybe we'll get a different outcome. That's how it always worked. If his mom came home in a bad mood, she made sure everyone in the house suffered too. I've experienced that. Yeah, I've experienced I've actually that. experienced all of that. Yeah. <laughs> Not the stepdad doing outrageous things like that just because he's angry. But, yeah. As a parent, it is super important to not let your storm rain on your children. If you're going through it and you had a bad day at work, you sit in the car and you cry for 20 minutes and then you come inside and nothing happened. Right. Decompression time. There are times when the kids are nonstop and we have nonstop stuff going on in life and the kids and I have been out of the house for six hours because we're shopping and doctor's appointments and you need me to go to the bank and all these other things. There was a time we pulled into the driveway and I was so stressed out and I was so aggravated and I was overstimulated and I can hear the kids chewing and the dog barking across the street and it was just, I cried in the car. (laughs) And the the kids came up to the front and they were like, what's the matter? And I'm like, I'm just frustrated. And they're like, it's okay to be frustrated. Yeah. And I sat in the car and I cried and they were doing whatever they were doing in the passenger seat. And it was good. I did not yell at them. I did not freak out at them. I did not say, don't talk to me. I was like, I am frustrated. And they were like, I get it. <laughs> and that was it. We cared about the rest of our day and it was dope. You need to learn to regulate your emotions. Yeah. You know, doing that in front of your kids, too, also shows them how to regulate their own emotions. Because being frustrated and crying but not screaming and throwing things is an okay thing to do. You're allowed to feel frustrated. The actions that you take from the emotion you're feeling is what can be shunned. Right. In summary, he was silenced and traumatized and learned how to turn off his emotions and feelings. He never dealt with the trauma from it all. He just shuts it out. He tells me I've saved his life multiple times because I've helped him see the abuse and manipulation that was happening around him. He has always had a hard time trying to communicate his feelings or thoughts to me because of his past. It is the biggest challenge we face still today. I'm a stay-at-home mom and wife, and he goes to work. We live where he works in an apartment complex, so he walks across the street. I take care of everything in the house and the children. He has a great dad to the kids and helps with anything for the kids. Recently, we have found ourselves in the same argument about once a month. It always seems to start when I come to him about some things that I feel are off, such as he becomes very distant. He doesn't really give me any sort of attention. And when I try to spice up our sex life, nine times out of ten it gets shut down. And I don't really get any appreciation for all that I do. No romantic gestures and etc. I came to him not in a nagging manner, just more of like, hey, I've been noticing X, Y, and Z. Is everything okay? Which leads to him becoming very defensive and says something like, I don't hit you or throw things or yell at you, so how do I treat you so horribly? Or he just goes silent. I have no idea what his thoughts are when I give him, and when I give him a little while and check back in, he says, I don't know what you want me to say. I just feel like sometimes I just have a physical spouse and I don't have the emotional support side of him. Sounds like depression. It does sound like depression. 
Uh, it sounds like in those moments where he becomes frustrated when you're bringing these to attention, he knows he's off. He knows he's not giving you the attention. He knows he's shutting you down every time. He probably feels like a failure of a husband because he can't meet those standards because of what he's going through in his mind. I don't, I don't know how I would approach that because I haven't put any thought into it, but there's definitely a way to approach that. Right. That doesn't make it a coming across as an attacking manner. Right. I also think it probably wouldn't be a bad idea to get his hormones checked. Yeah. <clears throat> um, but I, again, a lot of that's going to come down to the delivery and the way that you two communicate. Right. If he feels like he's being attacked, it doesn't matter what you say. He's going to feel like he's being attacked. Um, the distance thing and him shutting down like that and going through that um, cycle of it, it sounds like he's on and off depression. Like, that's really what that sounds like to me. There was some betrayal through the first year or so in our relationship on his side. Nothing physical, just over text or social media, which in my opinion is the worst. I do remember this email because I'm like, that's worse <laughs> than right. doing physical. And then she went on to say, yeah, that's the worst. And I was like, we agree. Same yeah. boat. We have an open phone policy, I guess you could say, where if either of us wants to look, they can, no questions asked. That's how, that's part of how you handle that. Yeah. If there has been a betrayal, especially over the internet, you have to be willing to have your phone open whenever they ask for it. And if you're not willing to do that, then don't do foul shit behind their back. After this most recent argument, he finally acknowledged that he has unhealed childhood trauma that he hasn't faced or dealt with. I have since suggested a few things to help him, but he doesn't seem like he really wants to do the work. I think it might be because he doesn't want to relive the trauma, but I know he can be a better man once he does the inner work and he knows that too. He has this cycle where he'll show improvement for about two to three weeks, then right back to how it was. I acknowledge his effort and improvement, and it just doesn't seem to stick around. It really does sound like depression to me. It does sound like depression. You know, before I started working on my mental shit, it sounds like it, it sounds like depression. It sounds like he is scared to face his past shit. Yeah. Because opening that door, the flood is going to go. If he has put all of this shit behind a door and that shit's like packed in there, like every time he opens it, he has to put his foot in front of it to shove something else in there. And he has to use his back to close that shit. There's a lot in there. Yeah. And having to deal with one instance from childhood is going to open everything. And it's going to be a nonstop cycle. He's going to be thinking about that shit before bed. It's going to be the first thing on his mind when he wakes up. Right. That is a very scary endeavor to go on. And to be mentally prepared for that, you're never going to be. I also think it's important to realize that parents can really fuck their kids up. They really can. And it can last a lifetime. Like there, yeah. there are people who never get over childhood traumas. And I'm not saying that it's right. I mean, they got to do the work to get past it. And like, you can go to therapy and you can learn how to do all that shit, but that doesn't mean that you're going to forgive and forget. You know what I mean? It just may help you process, you know, what happened, happened kind of thing. But, you know, if there's uh, an emotional void in him, detachment and things like that, because that's how he's processed his, his childhood trauma. Right. When he's going through something now, instead of processing it, he might be just detaching and that could be why he's getting depressed. Right. Because he's not dealing with the things that are bothering him. He's just shutting his emotions off. Going back to the parents fucking up children in childhood and all of that kind of stuff. When you start to face those kind of things, your relationships in your life are definitely going to change. Your perspective on the people in your childhood and your family is going to change and you can never go back to what it was before. Right. You're going to see them in a new light and you're going to see them for who they really are. And sometimes you're really going to be disappointed in it. Yep. That's just something you're going to have to accept. The acceptance that your parent failed you in childhood is not an easy thing to accept. Right. Because as a child, you always deserve the best. I hate it. Yeah. I hate it. I, I hate that this world is so toxic and shitty. Do you know, I think it's over in Japan. Children roam freely because Japan has collectively decided that those are our children. Yeah. And even if that child is not biologically <coughs> yours, if that's the first time you've seen this child, you don't know where they're going and where they came from. You're going to keep your eyes on that kid. There's fucking five I, and six year olds walking around going to school and going to supermarkets on their own because they know that every adult out there is going to keep them safe. Yeah, I have not heard anything about that. That was my childhood, though. I don't even <clears> feel <throat> safe taking the kids to grocery stores now. Yeah. I try to do my shopping when they're at dad's or if they're at school or Instacart. I think that's a trauma thing for you. I don't think because I, I've, I've never had a trauma in a grocery store. 
seeing all of these TikTok surveillance cameras of a mom turning her back and a kid being snatched from the cart. Right. But that's a learned thing. Like they're, that's a learned fear. Yeah. I, I don't know. I just, I, I would never fear like that. Like it, it, it's just not something I've ever thought of, but I know that with my daughter, um, in the, the, the two thousands, she didn't ride her bike. She rode it in on like our block. I would make her stay on the street so I could see her. Right. Where's the fun in that? Where's the adventure and the independence and like the life lessons that you learn by doing stupid shit? Like we're not in a good place because we can't trust our kids to go out and do shit. It's raising pussies. Yeah. It's almost like it's designed to do that. Yeah. You want to do another one? Yeah, we'll do one more because we're two hours in, two hours and 15 minutes. All right. This one is called help a single girl out unique situation from your normal couple questions. Okay. That is setting my expectations very high for this email. If you're going to claim this is a unique situation, like this better be a, like the, the flavor slapped out of my mouth kind of shit. Yeah. You get an extra flavor packet in your ramen. Yeah. Want that ramen made on the stove, not the microwave. Yeah. Hey, Chris and peaches. I think I have a unique situation compared to most people asking for advice on your podcast. So if you'd like a different take for content, I think we can help each other out. I'm a newer, I am newer to your to be better family, but I have witnessed a lot of similar values and found encouragement, listening and learning from how you both navigate the day to day in your relationship. We really do navigate day to day in our relationship. It's like, it's like we're on a ship. And you're, you're the captain of the ship and you're at the wheel and you're doing your shit. And sometimes I need to take over. But when I take over, I'm shouting at you, okay, now what? <laughs> <laughs> but we do <coughs> it. And it gets done. Yep. And sometimes we go off course, but we get back. Okay, now what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just the co-captain here. You guys. look really good in a dress. Oh, yeah? You want to? You're a fucker. <laughs> I'm glad that actually did something to you because I felt so silly. You're a fucker. Yeah. Yeah. I'm getting all red now because I was totally out of my comfort zone. It's been a week. A week. I'm going to ruin you. Yeah, right. <laughs> Good luck with that. So... Before you get to that, you know, we hit, I hit you with those cheesy one-liners. Yeah. There was one this morning that I almost came out here and was like, can I rearrange the alphabet so that I can put you and I next to you? Right? Okay. And I was going to come in here and read it and be like, hey, can I rearrange the alphabet? And I was like, never mind. I've already got your guts. And then I was going to walk away. <laughs> I might have to do that sometime. That's funny, right? She's screaming. It's crazy that people say you're to be better family. Yeah. We have built a community. We have built a community. I don't want to be the mom. Well, we're not. People are saying that on the internet. They're calling us mom and dad. It says a lot. Yeah. Like it your does. families are that fucked up that you're picking us to, to give that title to. Random people on the internet. Wild. I mean, I can see it. I'm just going to say our kids are lucky to have us. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. You know, I'm fully prepared for them to be grownups and hit me with the things that I fucked them up with. I'm in their sure childhood. they will. Oh, hey, yeah. Kids are always going to do that. Always. And I'm <clears throat> fully prepared to apologize for it and say that I will do better. Yeah. I never want them to feel invalidated with their experiences with me. It's going to hurt hearing that I did things that hurt them, but I'm ready. Yeah. I never do it intentionally. Yeah. I think they'll be way minor though. Yeah. Thank you for sharing, even when it's uncomfortable. I am in a season of working on my emotional intelligence, coping mechanisms, communication skills, and becoming the woman my ideal partner would find in their peace in. Good. Doing the work now set my future relationship up for success. So here's the problem. I am struggling with two fundamental aspects at the moment. Trusting a man enough to let him... Oh, trusting a man enough to follow him slash let him lead me. Lots of phonies and narcissists out there. I hate that word. And getting out of... I was going to say I hate the word phonies too, but I know you meant narcissists. I actually like the word phonies. It just makes me chuckle. It's such a stupid word. And getting out of the habits I have from operating in my masculine energy out of survival. I don't want to stay in that bubble, 
but don't know how to step out of it. I know men like straight to the point statements identifying the problems that they can help fix. So there you go, Chris. All right. So on that, it's not a matter of trusting a man. It's a matter of finding a man that's capable of leading you. Right. Because not all men are capable leaders. You can trust any man until he proves that you can't. Right. You, you find somebody that, that deserves your trust and then you give it to them. The idea that you can trust every man that comes into your life or every woman that comes into your life or you should just submit to every partner you ever have, that's earned. Yeah. So when you find somebody that earns that, you give it to them. But until then, you don't. Yeah. And that comes down to not settling. Correct. So solve that one. That was easy. All right. For <clears throat> peaches, here's a little background and color to help inform your possible feedback. Chris, I wholeheartedly invite you to share your thoughts as well. I know you may not care. I just know that you may not care. I am 35, never married and no kids. I have been, I happen to have a very high powered job, but it is not my passion. Well educated and a very curious person who always has a hunger to learn. Very active outdoors and closely connected to friends, family and my community. So she's asking me for my opinion on things. And I would say I'm pretty decently educated. I can understand being in a good job, but not having a passion for it. I'm also a very curious person. I like being outside. I like learning things, but I am not connected to anybody. (laughs) I have like maybe three friends that I talk to and my mom and my sister. I couldn't imagine. That's so much, so much energy. How do you guys do it? Some people thrive on that. I can't. I have just been fine alone all this time. Every aspect of my life is full, except for this life partner shaped gaping hole in my chest. I know the man that I will be able to submit to and respect will need to be needed. How do I create that space for him? Why would he need to be needed? I know the man that I will be able to submit to and respect will need to be needed. Oh, so you mean like, because she's in her masculine. It's not that he's going to need to be needed. You can't challenge him. I, I disagree with that entire sentence. What I, don't, I just said. No, that one on the email. Right. I, I don't need shit. I know. He's not going to need to be needed. <clears throat> right. You just can't challenge his masculinity with your own. Right. And you need to realize that he's going to have his strengths just like you have yours. Right. The idea of needing somebody. I don't fucking need anyone. I've lived my entire life on my own. I want you. Right. There's a fucking difference. And you bring value to my life. And therefore, we have what we have. But the idea of me needing somebody and, and having that need to be needed, I, that's not a thing. I, I don't... That Nope. And I don't know if, if the, a man like me is what you're looking for in terms of a man, but most men don't need to be needed. Yeah. And and we want to provide and protect and do things. And if you're if you're in a high-earning high job, you just have to set your standards to a man who... <clears throat> is equal to, if not greater than you. I would go as far to say if a man feels like he is needed, like a necessity, he's going to feel like he's being taken advantage of. Yeah. If you need my money, if I remove the money, I'm no longer worth anything to you. Right. I don't, yeah, I don't want to be needed. Right. I provide because I want to provide. Right. I'm not, I didn't get into a relationship with you knowing that this was going to be the thing that we have. If, no. if I thought we were getting into a relationship so that you could have the life that you have, we wouldn't have progressed the way that we did. I actually <clears> fought <throat> you a little bit on this. It was definitely a, a conversation that yeah. lasted a while. It was multiple conversations. The first time you brought it up, I my first thought was, are you out of your mind? Yeah. Because I just that that's something that never crossed my mind. We never really discussed it. It was crazy. Right. But the idea of us dating... With the sole goal of me being this way. Right. Right. That would put a, a stigma on what I believe we have. I right. would know from the beginning that I am nothing more to you than a paycheck. That's not what you want. You don't have to find a man that, that can provide for you that can be in his masculine like that. If you're an outdoorsy person, you can find an outdoorsy person that could lead in other aspects. Like maybe he's a hiker or, you know, a rock climber. And he can lead you in that aspect. And you guys can both have a really high paying job and have a fuck ton of money. Mm. And you can l- allow him to make the decisions because you trust him to do so. 
if you're if you're a high earner and you you start dating a fucking bum, somebody that's got two hundred thousand dollars plus of debt, you know, had a house repossessed, cars repossessed, can't budget their fucking money, is living paycheck to paycheck, is super fucking broke. You're not gonna let them lead you, right? Because you can look at their life and go, yeah, you no, don't have you. that, right? You just need to find somebody that meets the standard of living that you have and then pursue something with them. That's not yeah. that's not a hard thing to do. It, that's gonna come down to finding somebody that matches that. Everyone so far has been intimidated and I end up leading and this girl is tired. I, I don't think that men are intimidated by you. Right. I was actually going to comment I, on that. I, I fucking hate that. We're not. Men are not intimidated by you. It's just, we're just not. You may have frail little boys who like may try to manipulate you for your, manip- manipulate you for your money. That's a real thing. I've seen men do that shit trying to get a sugar mama like it, it happens. But to say that men are intimidated by you because you're a high earner, that's bullshit. We're not intimidated by you, I promise. So when it comes to men that you claim are being intimidated by you, they're not intimidated by you. When you're a woman and you're masculine, that's not attractive. Right. Ooh, that's a good point. They want a woman who is in their feminine. And if you are challenging and you're putting your dick on the table on the first date, he's not intimidated by you. He's going, oh, she's one of them. Yeah. Yeah, you're not wrong. And if you end up leading, it's not you end up leading. You've already taken the reins. You are putting yourself in that leadership position. Right. You're right on that. It's not attractive. Right. You, you you really are. That's not an attractive thing. Men don't want that combative. Right. If they wanted a person with testosterone, they would date a dude. Yep. I know that the gay community has different names for like different types of gay men. And they're going to go for like that big burly dude who's going to be able to throw them around. If they want someone with high testosterone, that's what they're going to they're gonna look for. Right. I mean, there are some dudes out there who want super manly women, but even then, those super manly women are still feminine. Who have muscle and body build and do all of that shit and can throw a man around. Those are still feminine women. They walk around in dresses and they know how to conduct themselves as a woman. Right. When you have that masculine energy, you just seem combative. Does that make sense? Yeah. No, it does. But I also don't think that that it's fair to compare masculinity with the, the combativeness. <clears throat> because I don't think it's a masculine energy. If you have standards and you're not willing to go below those standards and you're you're dating fuckboys, you're off rip going, this is not what I want. Right. So you are you are making it a problem right off rip. You're destroying the relationship before it starts because you realize that this person's not up to your standard. It may not be a masculine thing. Like if if you were dating somebody that was a basement dweller on the first date and you realized that, you would be a very different date than it was when we went on our first date. Right. Because you realize what you're dealing with. I mean, I guess maybe that could be a masculine thing. I just, I don't know. I think it's a self-sabotage thing. You're just trying to weed through the bullshit to find a quality individual. But I also agree that it's not attractive. I'm also curious about your thoughts on physical stature and the dance of submission slash being led. I'm a six foot tall, former D1 athlete, and I carry that confidence. The pool of men who are not ego bruised by the fact by that fact is as deep as a Dixie cup. Well, you got an ego. Yeah, that is pretty egotistical. You you can find men that are manly that right. would fucking throw you around like a rag doll. I don't care if you're six six foot one and a, a D one player in high school or college. Right. Are you still in college? Because that was you know. Are we Al Bundy in this shit? Yeah. Because what happened when you were a younger person compared to what you're going through now, you're not the same person. Mm-hmm. I, you're not that D1 athlete anymore. And if you are that D1 athlete still, there are still men out there who fucking work a blue collar job that would look at you and go, excuse me, Raggedy Ann? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> First time I picked you up and threw you around, you were like, what the fuck just happened? I was off the ground. You were blown the fuck away. Yeah. I can pick you up from a seated position, stand and carry you across the house like it's nothing. Yeah, you can. That, that... Oh, I'm a big Amazon D1, blah, blah, blah. So? I will never forget the time that you texted me that you were benching my weight. You know, I, I have video of me me pressing over 400 pounds. I yeah. just, I'm, I'm obviously not there anymore. That was 10 years ago. But I am still a very strong person, even with the injuries that I have. Mm. That comes down to a life of, of just strength training and, right. and being a big country boy. Like I can throw a bale of hay from the back of a pickup truck into a loft. I can do that all day long. I have that, I mean, I probably don't have it as much as I used to, but there is that natural strength there. The question is, is if you found a man that was trying to throw you around like a rag doll and showed you that he had the capability, how much would you fight him on that? 
Because if he tried to pick you up and treat you like that, knowing that you were going to enjoy it, and you tried to fucking submit him and put him in an arm bar or a triangle choke or something while he was trying to carry you around, that's not attractive. Yeah. Like, at that point, he went from trying to be sexual playful to you trying to fucking end his life. Like, there's an ebb and flow. Right. If I tried to pick you up and you tried to squirm and fight your way out of it... You would never do it again. I, right? Yeah, I wouldn't. Because you're, you're clearly showing me that that's not something you're interested in happening. Like, you're not enjoying that. It's not fun for you. Put you down. I have zero qualms about height. If someone has a mission that I can get behind and can lead from a place of authority that I can trust... Height is a freaking number that I don't care about. That's good. It always ends up being a problem for most men I date, though. Eventually, they start to do things like ask me to not wear heels, then ask me to be muted and quiet so I don't stand out. Then they overcompensate and get a little mean with backhanded comments to put me down so they feel elevated. So you just date weak men. It does sound like weak men. Yeah, I mean, that's... that's Stop dating. When the right person comes along, the right person will come along. Don't seek that person. Yeah. When you are seeking that person, you're going to have to deal with this shit until you find the one in a billion. The fact that you and I are together absolutely blows my mind and I feel absolutely blessed. This shit just doesn't happen. Yeah. It's not a coincidence. Yep. And we weren't seeking for each other. Yeah, it sounds like she just keeps finding weak men. And why aren't you weeding those weak men out in the beginning? Right. Like, you, you know. Real recognizes real. When I walk into a room, I, I can tell who the fucking threats are. And I know who the pussies are. I can look at the room and say, okay, bitch, 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 threat, bitch, 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 threat. You can do the same thing. If you learn to read a room, when you sit down on a date, you know within the first five or ten minutes if you're dealing with a bitch or if you're dealing with a man. And if, if you're dealing with a bitch, just don't go on a second date with him. Yeah. It's not hard. You know, I kind of do the same, but with women when I walk into a room. Not that they would ever be a threat to me. Because really, if a woman's going to be a threat to me, you're going to have to have a pew pew on you. Otherwise, yeah, yeah. the it's, great it's going down. Yep. But outside of that, when I walk into a room, I can immediately tell what woman is insecure and what woman's not. Yeah, you just learn to read a room. Situational awareness goes a long fucking way. You know, I also do look at men like that. I can tell what men's a bitch and what man is not when I walk into a room. Yep. Like if I'm out in public and we're not together, if I'm running errands or something, when I walk into a store, I, I look around and I see if something goes down, who am I going to go to? Right. It's situational awareness. Yeah. That's all there is to that. And, and knowing that and being able to read that room and, and being able to ascertain those things is going to serve you a lot in life. This is a cycle I'm so frustrated with. I can't control my, I, my height. So what else can I do? You control your attitude. Um, so the one thing that I would do the first time a man asked me not to wear heels, fucking kick rocks. Yeah. When I put on heels, I'm taller than you. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to stop wearing heels. No. My ass looks amazing in heels. I, I couldn't imagine you not me asking you to not wear heels. I right. don't give a shit if you're taller than me. And if somebody was ever like, dude, your woman's taller than you. I would look at you and be like, really raggedy Ann? <laughs> and you would be like, oh no, 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 no. It's not like that at all. Because I will throw you around like a fucking rag doll. Right. And, and I got to be honest, as shitty as this sounds and this is going to sound shitty, even if you tried to fight me, I could still throw you around like a fucking rag doll. I know my strength. So my physical stature makes up for my height if you're in heels. If you were six foot yeah. five and 280 pounds, I could still pick you up over my head. Yeah. Height means nothing. Are there questions that I can ask? Actions I can take to make a man feel more secure? Watch the gentleman video, commit it to memory and look for men who follow that behavior pattern because men who have the thought process like what I laid out in the gentleman video is not going to give you all of that bullshit. You're going to be dating a different breed of human being. I do sprinkle in obvious ones. I ask them for help and advice. I give genuine compliments. I actively listen and I don't leave them hanging and thoughtful actions, but I have been unsuccessful. Is there a creative take that you can think of? I don't want to completely shut down who I am, but I long for a partner who I can operate in my feminine power and be soft and nurturing and fiercely loyal to my person. I want to build an empire together. I just don't see a way forward without having to sacrifice myself. Why would you sacrifice yourself? The only thing I disagree with in that entire email is that whole D1 mindset. Yeah. If you think that you're some badass because you were a division one player, like that's a very small fraction of who you are as a person. Like, I, I, I got to be honest, the, the, high, the high energy job, not having kids, like none of that is a flaw. There's nothing in that email that, that screams like this is a problem. The D1 mindset and, and like 
having the feeling that you have men that, that look up on you instead of, you know what I mean? Like instead of eye to eye, I think that really comes down more to the, the, the quality of man that you're dating. The dating, the dating pool is shallow as fuck. The good ones are taken because women who get a good man fucking realize it and they fight for him. It takes work. It you, you get a good man, you're willing to do the work. You get a shitty one, he's going to end up single again. And that process will repeat over and over and over again. And at 35 years old, you got a lot of shitty men or they're divorced because they got tired of dealing with a shitty woman. So now if you're at 35, 40 years old, you get a fucking man who's 40, 45 years old or, or even in his 30s, it's been divorced. He's got fucking standards. And you're not going to be able to just squeak by. He's going to have a high expectation just like you should have an high expectation. You shouldn't lower your standards to date somebody. That That's fucking asinine to me. Why would you ever date outside of your ability or even out of your tax bracket for that matter? And I know that that's going to rub a lot of people the wrong way for real. But like, you should be dating in your tax bracket. If I was If I was a woman who was making big money, I wouldn't be trying to date a lower class individual. I wouldn't. And if I was an outdoorsy person, I would be trying to find outdoorsy people that have a good job and fucking have a work ethic and, and are willing to go and do outdoorsy shit so that we have something in common and build from that. <clears throat> That's all I got on that one. There's also a massive hurdle of knowing how to shift from being my own and operating in the super masculine space for all of my life and slowly transitioning into my feminine space and relinquishing control to the right man, of course. It will be a process for sure that involves time and trust, but how do I even start? What would a baby step look like? And not something trivial like asking him to pick dinner or make a sacrifice or make a surface decision. Where is a starting place to seriously release something important, but that won't break me or the life I've built? I'm honestly terrified. I've white knuckled this life thing because I have t because I've had to. I'm scared that. I'm scared that how I handle that transition may damage an eventual budding relationship with someone I know I can make happy. I also don't want to hurt any men while I figure this crap out. Any ideas? I mean, I, I kind of already answered all of that throughout okay. the entire email. All right. So everything that was said previously. Yeah. The baby steps are just going to happen. You can't expect somebody to come in and just start making major decisions off rip. That trust has to be built. Foundation has to be built. That's how those baby steps happen. Find somebody that's compatible with you in terms of the, your interest and build off of that. When you find the right person, that shit's going to come naturally. Let's call it. Alrighty. We'll see you guys on the next one. Bye, guys.